and I think it was the, the kind of graveyard garden area, and it was a group of thuggish-looking men. We don't know who they were working for. We sus- we have a suspicion, but we don't know for sure. Because when Felix got over there, he put his hand over on the wall, and it crumbled after a critical failure in his stealth roll. <laughs> and from there was a master class in improvisation. You know, good, good, good. Rolling through the plans there, he had plan A, like I said, was the stealth. That failed. Oh, God. Plan B... Plan B was the uh, was the invisibility, which which turned out great. And so once you escaped, you went to Plan C, which we pulled off flawlessly as pretending to be spooky, spooky ghosts. That uh, was and just was a good, good time. But we went there, explored there, found the rod, immovable rod, which was in he was holding. And then I believe Nespip used acid to actually loosen the lock so Ellie could pick it. I think that's how it ended up happening. Um, opened it up. We left Thistle out. LD has like a walkie-talkie telepathy, telepathy thing, so you can touch a creature, and it can communicate back and forth uh, with her for. A, I think I think you rolled like four miles or something. Uh, maybe it was two miles. <laughs> it, it's like a long enough distance. for yeah, yeah, <laughs> enough. And so we left her out there in the bushes kind of doing one of these right here to make sure nobody came. So if anybody came, she could squawk and stuff to Elodie. Went there, started exploring, found some scrolls, found uh, it was Remove Curse, Lesser Restoration, and Dispel Magic. Uh, picked up some Holy Oil and Healing Potions. And then moved on, found some Gizmos and some Mephits who we convinced to uh, go their own way and leave us alone with some very rare gems that Nesp had in his pouch. Very rare, very shiny gems that uh, the Pisarine, I think it was what they were, from across mm-hmm. the continent, from across the ocean, another continent. Uh, very yeah, we really like those. Gems. Very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for for context, they were it, it was a it's a skill you have where you can make something shiny. Like, I think it's artificer skill. I can do small to... stuff to some objects, and they actually last indefinitely until I reuse that slot. So it's at some point and probably like weeks it will go out. <laughs> oh, it's really it was, hey. <laughs> <laughs> We've been full. We've been had. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we. Got through there, made it down into a crypt where we had lots of lots of you know mummified corpses out on uh, sarcophagus tables. Uh, we had the brilliant idea to drag one of them over. Well, there's a big stone tables to uh, we opened the door which led into the main crypt. Uh, we could drop it down on top of the stone slab so that we could crawl under and still keep our rods um, to go under there, which was a good idea, but we discovered that maybe we should have left the body on there and squished the body as well. Because <laughs> we were trying to be respectful, moved the body off the off the thing and laid it down and it ended up waking up after St. Brenna woke up and one shot at Elodie with with a uh, yeah there she is the two, yeah, the two the two guys we fought last week right there saint brenda and skeleton <laughs> one shot at elodie and after we finished them both off we discovered that the reason they woke up were the candles and the candles is the trick to it and saint brenda's candles were put out by this uh war crime water possibly and we just didn't move the candles for the other guy so they woke up and that's where we're at <laughs> they do an early road. I poked her and she cursed me. Typical rogue stuff. Yeah, that's basically yeah. Handy. <laughs> That's why you need um, the rogue so, rog- rog- <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, that is uh, that is where we left off last week. Um Saint Brenna was uh, finally stabbed to uh to ho- holy hell. <laughs> basically that's where she went, I guess. Um she uh decomposed into a pile of corpse dust with a little bit of bandaging uh, left on top of it. Um, the other guy, the, the, the skeleton, uh, was uh, also killed uh, and is uh, 
lying on the ground over there being uh, more dead than what he already was, apparently. Um, and that is indeed where we ended last week. Uh, Atoli, you uh, basically ran around the room. You did a couple of frost spells since you noticed that it did some damage at some point. Uh, so that's I, I followed that logic. I would assume you would do that. Um, and you avoided damage. You ran around and was like, nope, no, 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 from the back. There you go, magic. Ah, um, played, pl I played perfectly. I figured as much. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that is where you are, and that is where you guys can go and pick it up. So good luck. I think we were about to head up to open the other door, right? Yeah, that was the idea. Um, and going through it now, I, I just have a thought. It's like, let's try and... Let's, let's try and light the candles before we go. Uh... Because if, because I don't know, I, I just don't want to come back and have a mummy again. Does that make sense? Uh, we can try, so. but they were magical candles, so I don't know if that. Well, and that I think well, the we candles could probably themselves light, are still. Could... The candles themselves are still normal. The the fire on it is magical, but the candles themselves are still pretty normal candles. They would just go out eventually because. It would burn down is, is what would happen. So that would be a consequence. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're going to. Yeah. We can I just. Think also, we can try to just, just like chop off the head and put it somewhere else or something like that. Okay. Just, just carry her remains like somewhere. Else. Yeah. I think that might be a better option. Let's just carry. We can just carry her head somewhere else. <laughs> So like, there's no head option. left. It's just a pile of dust at this point. She just returned oh, to the right. sands, basically. Yeah, it's just it's just a pile oh. of dust. Then I guess we could oh. sweep it up. Sure. Yeah, we can <laughs> we can scoop it up. We can scoop it up and throw it somewhere else. How big is the pile? How big is the pile? Um, about one urn. <laughs> okay, about one Saint Bread. I was bargaining for. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's um, not much. Okay. Do you have a thought of how to carry it uh, out here? No, uh, not the whole thing. I was just thinking if I should take some of that with me in one of my bottles. Oh. Uh, yeah. But I don't think that's worth it. Uh, wait, I'm I'm wondering a little bit. Is she? Isn't she important to the? Um... The church or something? The um the, the light guys? Yeah, she's she's the person the chapel's named after. <laughs> Saint Brenna. <laughs> no, I meant like um what they call the Sacred Flame. Yeah, th this is the Church of Sacred Flame. Like she's a saint and she woke up and tried to kill us. Hmm. And she goes still uh, need to find the uh, Holy MacGuffin. Yeah, the scepter. Well we were gonna go oh, well I guess let's let's do this. So our plan was to go back up and use the winch to try and open this this door. Yeah, because the door um, over there, when you walk over there, it looks exactly like the one that you've just propped with the stone um, sarcophagus. Uh, this is again like one of those like walls made of wood and iron. No no handles, no locks, whatsoever. It's just a solid wall gate, if you will. So, um, I, I think the plan again will be to drag the sarcophagus underneath it. Am I going to be guessing right? I mean, we don't really care about that door, but we want to check out the other burial chamber. Maybe there's something there. I assume it's just another way down uh, from the other stairs. Over here? I'm not yeah. sure. I, th I think it's on a different location than the, the spinny thing upstairs. I mean, we can just go yeah. and check. Yes. Okay. Planning the way. I have a bit of a question here, actually, because I notice in my inventory I have both a backpack and a chest. Yes. Where is this chest located? Um, it's strapped to your person. Okay. Cool. By default. Yeah. Because I was wondering if it was somewhere else, because like apparently I have a shit ton of different kind of tools. Yeah. In your chest. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, cool. Okay, well, I guess if we're going to go upstairs, then I guess I'm going to... Nebrolin would 
relight. Because you because the the altar specifically said the candles are what caused the resurrection. If I call, because yesterday I was inspecting it because I was really pissed off. I was so careful to respect the respect the area. Right, that's what that's what the side said. You mean the um uh like the 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 panels in the burial chamber? Well, because yesterday I was I was real. I mean, I and the barlow was also kind of aggravated that they woke up because I was trying to be careful for that very reason, and yeah. I was reading along there, and you and I kind of barely passed a religion check or something, and you said that the candles are the reason why. So at that point, that was the candles indeed. If you want to uh, double check with the panels above, you can. Like you know, they're uh, just a brisk, uh, like a, a brisk walk away. That I probably should. Well, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna relight the candles <laughs> before we go and you know, move them out of the water. I have done that with my. And the, okay. The candles are currently lit. Okay. Has no anybody? Has anybody searched for um, delirium around here? Um, the water. So the water itself wasn't glowing like uh, with was glowing like delirium. Correct. Up, up the, on the uh, top. The puddle of water uh, surrounding the um, the stone sarcophagus and basically also the, the corpse of Saint Breda was just waterlogged. Um, if you look up, there's a crack in the ceiling and there's water coming down. This water has like an octarine glow to it. And there was some ground, like on the ground floor, or rather on the surface, there was some uh, dirt that also glowed pink. So okay. that's probably our best bet to look for it. Because I like it's just I saw it's happening like right there. Okay, well I guess the what was the plan? We we're gonna go back up and use the other winch. And probably go down the other stairway. So we're not gonna take her ashes and bring that back to the sacred flame. Oh, no, that's actually that. not a bad idea. But I mean they abandoned the temple. Yes, but so they didn't abandon not, their that... saint. We, Besides, we could, it could we also could gather... be used as a lever leverage chip. Mm -hmm. They probably have like twenty other things. So, well, yeah, I'm totally getting a I get a jar of dirt thing from like, Jack Sparrow. <laughs> 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 it's a totally. I get a, a bag totally, of bread. If, uh... <laughs> if if you if you get a container, I'll, I, we can scoop her up. <laughs> I might have a chest. I'm sure we can find an urn around here. Um. I mean, heck, there has to be an urn around here somewhere. At least uh, in the alcoves upstairs, there is one. But I am, I mean, in the other room where all the uh, all the other uh, sarcophagi are, there is like bits and pieces there like that. So yeah, you'll find an urn that you can use. I mean, just empty it out of right. whoever is in it and put her in it instead. <laughs> totally, you you can can totally add a jar of <laughs> jar of dirt to <laughs> this in inventory. Yes, you can. <laughs> that I'm <is> doing <laughs> it. <laughs> Running around with a crusted saint. And guess what's inside it? <laughs> I'm a jar of bread. Jar of bread and dirt. <laughs> I'm okay with it. New item container. Create new item. Jar of Saint Bread. <laughs> Come to negotiate. I have you slimy dick. I got a jar of dirt. 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 Jar of bread. That sounds like oil oil. This sounds like a like a mid product. We have some uh, holy oil, so we can oh God. mix them two together and then. Oh. Yeah, and don't forget, like in the in the like seventeen hundreds and eighteen hundreds and whatnot, like you know, people like ground up mummies for a whole bunch of shit. Like you know, they yeah. were pained out of it. They ate it because it was healthy. It was creepy. Like a lot of mummies were lost to that. Yeah, like people people are crazy, man. <laughs> I don't think it edited right now. It just shows up next to my chest. Uh, which for now is fine. Like we can we yeah. can call that as being in in sure. chest. Like, I don't, uh... All right, cool, cool. All right, uh, you guys are going oh, to oh, 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 the. Uh, floor above. Hang on. Can you... Come on, can you be nice? There we are. Boop. 
Oh, Isabel, I just saw, would they believe that's her ashes and not just some other... That's a good question. I, I think we'll have to do some convincing. We'll see about that when we get there. Yeah. For now, it's my bargaining chip. All right, as you move through the... Um... Small hallways. Um, I'll stay you... behind Elodie to keep her guarded. Nabarlan, when you uh, walk into the room with the font in the middle, um, this is where those panels are. Um, when you take another good look at them, uh, there's five, pa five panels in total, um, and they indeed sort of show how a body is prepared for, for interment. Um, the first panel is uh, basically the cleaning of the body and, and whatnot. The second one is the wrapping. Uh, the third one uh, shows lighting of candles. The fourth one shows placement of any uh, weapons and or uh, medallions. You can clearly see that they're like being put back on mm -hmm. the prepared body. And you see on the fifth one, they're all standing around it ha holding hands as if like in pair or a hymn or something like that. Um, okay. So I'm getting, okay, now I'm getting the sense that uh, for her to stay, okay. We're going to have to, maybe if we keep her body, it won't be an issue. I'm just like, because my thought was if we remove the trink, the, the, the jewels, it would wake her up, wake him up. But Are we going to have to do up. a prayer? It's but she woke up anyway because the, the candles weren't lit. But we lit the candles. We took the body anyway. We we have her ashes here, so like if, if she springs I mean, to it's life, not, I was about to say it's not like she's coming back again now. Yeah, she's okay. Okay, but it sounds like they had to do a prayer, not just the candles. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe it's just a anyway. Um, we got her ashes, so if she comes back now, well, she'll be springing out of your out of your chest here on your person. Yeah, she's gonna. Need to do some contorting, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think uh, Nesbib and Felix will probably start doing the same thing like with the other uh, turn thing. So slotting the, uh, the the immovable rod into into it, turning it, how much we turn the other one, stopping it, and... Yeah. Bef bef before you do that, um, can Nabarlin Morgan to Thistle from where he's at. Uh, you can, and you won't get a response. No! <laughs> no, Thistle! Ah! Her sacrifice will be remembered. Well, I mean, she was there as a lookout, so this will... That means something is on its way downhill. So that, or something's up there, yeah. And they were looking because she was in the bushes. So they were, they were. Well, I guess we did just melt the the thing. So they were looking for something. Or, yeah, let's keep an eye on our bags. Someone will probably run into us soon. Or something. Well, luckily this will. Luckily this can be reborn. So. Hmm. Um, so, we, so, so you um, you turn the winch uh, which you can obviously using the immovable rod also um, the gemstones that they mentioned earlier I believe I'm not sure if you uh, got that part of totally but every body that is interred here other than getting a weapon or a holy symbol or whatever they also get two citrines placed in their eyes which are rather valuable gemstones I do remember that all right, just wanted to make sure that you uh, caught that as well. Um, okay, so you turn the winch, you perfectly can. And once it's, like, as far as it can go, you, you'll hear, like, a, sort of like a, like a chain going. Uh, once you have it as far as you want it to go, what do you do? Are you going to keep holding on to it? Or are you going to press the button? What do you do? I'm going to keep holding on to it, try to press the button with the other hand to lock it, and then let go. All right. As you do that, the uh, immovable rod obviously will stay in place, and uh, um, well, that and it will stay in place. Are okay. you all going to go downstairs on that side? 
I think I'm going to send yeah. uh, Carly ahead again because we weren't down there yet. If, okay. If that's okay. Yes, you can. Um, if you send him down, he will go uh, straight and hit a wall immediately. Okay, then I will slowly follow. In that case, I will swap to uh, the other map again. Let me move you guys up. Because you're on the other side right now. Um, I'm moved by in some unnatural force. Ah, magic. You come down a staircase. Uh, which immediately turns uh, towards a gate, which at this point indeed is um, open. So is that just a normal door, or is it one of those... Uh... It's one of those gates. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it has been opened. So it was the wench, the po Yeah, so I guess, I think y'all, so you're... We opened it with the wench. As you look around the corner, you will see a room rather similar as one that you saw on the other side. Though this one, not carved out of this, uh, the very rock, but rather just made of brick and stone. There's more bodies lying interred here, um, but this side, while neglected, looks a lot better than the other side. This one looks like it was made with intent. I'm gonna send our mind diffusal robot in there and <laughs> let it take a lap again. All right, uh, nothing will happen. Did you call okay. it a mind diffusal robot? I've been sending it ahead the whole time to run into any traps. Man, you so. miss you miss one episode and things just turn awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the big black circle? That pillar. Oh, that is a stone pillar that the, the room was built around. Um, I think now that you're coming into the room, uh, one thing that you, all of you will immediately notice is that there is one thing, well, other than the fact that the room looks different, there's one thing definitely different than the other bodies on the other side. The other bodies all had normal weapons and um, uh, medallions around their neck. The weapons themselves in the other crypt looked... Maybe usable, but old and neglected. On this side, most of the weapons look the same way, except for one. There's one weapon that stands out. There is a um, uh, a great sword over here with one of the bodies. It's the one over here. That great sword glows subtly blue. Guys, before we do anything, should mm -hmm. we uh, try to take down the immovable rock with us again? So nobody captures in, us in here. That sounds like what a very we, what good idea. What are we going to... We take the rod out, it's, the door is going to slam. Oh, we'll we'll just then... use one of the sarcophagi again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and right. keep the body on it this time. And the candles. <laughs> so, how did we do it last time? We got our ropes, and we got... Holly and Blondie pulling, and then I guess a couple of us on the other side pushing. Uh, which uh, sarcophagus uh, are you going to use for this one? I, I don't think we should do All the right. one with the sword. I you want to go with the one that's, that's why I'm asking. Alone. <laughs> uh, which, which one y'all think? Let's go with the soft mm -hmm. one. Yay. I have a bad feeling about this. Hey, it worked last time until it woke up, so, you know. And now we're keeping the body on top of it, so it will be smashed by the door. Yeah, body on top, candles, we're going to move the candles too this time. So, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. All right, so if you move the entire package, if you will, <laughs> uh, towards the door, uh, I'll place it like over here. I think that would be the most uh, logical. Body still on top, candles are still on top, everything is there. Um, that way, it's it's like it basically it's disturbed from its place in the crypt, 
but beyond that, nothing is disturbed. That's what we're looking at here. That, yeah, that's, um, that's the idea. Yeah. Felix will go up and retrieve the rod. I'm going to come with you. Okay. As you go up and you retrieve the rod, the gate will come down. Um, as it was with the other side as well. But it'll it'll hit the stone sarcophagus and it'll hit the body itself as well. So because the body is still on top of it, uh, smashing it clean in in half. It doesn't like explode off of the coffin. It's just cut in half. Um, but with a loud thud, <laughs> it stops on top of the stone sarcophagus, uh, leaving a gap next to it that you can crawl underneath. Did anybody th think of the consequences if the sarcophaga can't actually hold the weight anymore or somebody comes around and destroys them and we get trapped down here? I mean, they're almost massive stone, aren't they? Yeah, they're basically. They, yeah, they're but, not open sarcophagi, guys. They're basically solid slabs of stone, but you I mean, raise a point that no one else has. They're still empty inside, which means they have thinner stone walls on either side that are no, potentially... No, no. no. no so there, there, there's two types of sarcophagi. This is the uh, the display sarcophagus. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So it's cool. a solid yeah, slab I, of stone. Your point is still potentially I valid, mean, but it's not still, as detrimental as you might no, think. No, no. <laughs> they can still break, though. But yeah. It's, well, I, I actually... Yes. Last week, I asked about opening the casket up, uh, because I had that thought too. I didn't say at the time, it was actually, that's, it was looking inside there, but my thought was in case it was a. Uh, Everything empty. breaks with enough weight or, you know. No, it, it's still in that case, we could also break the door. Yeah, that's true, I guess. And it's easier to remove a rod of holding to trap us under here than to destroy a, a massive stone slab. So. Yep, okay. Uh, uh, just slight concern, just saying. <laughs> Now, Elodie, uh, maybe you shouldn't be the one to touch or do anything this time around. <laughs> Just... She begs to differ. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> do it. The rogue I mean, is coming. Like a true rogue. <laughs> yep, the rogue is coming out. I love that. Um, sure. Uh, let's uh, have a look at the sword. I, I imagine you want to have a look at the sword. If you do, give me a... Um, do you just want to have a cursory glance? Uh, like you, you can do like one or two with your fingers. <laughs> uh, do you want to do uh, a cursory glance to just have a look what it is, like if there's anything special about the weapon, or do you want to see what's magical about it? See the magic. All right, give me an arcana check, please. It's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> that usually uh, I saw like it, it was like on the line for me as well. Um, it's it's glowing, and that's something that swords generally don't do, which hints at the fact that it might be magical. Beyond that, this is above your pay grade. Yeah, do we want to do a? Because like mm -hmm. I think one of either we could do a detect magic on it, but that's ten minutes for yeah. know, me or Nespa to do. Um, I guess I'll look at it too. I see her <laughs> glancing at it, and she's like, "Oh, that's a pretty sword." I think I'll I'll take a look too. Sure. Uh, again, Arcana. Do you want to see for the magic? Sure, sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> well then. Um, so this is a it is a great sword. Um, and looking at it, it emits a um, uh, a subtle blue glow, which. But it looks if it goes for about 10, 15 feet. It's very dimly, though, so you can't use it as a torch, but it, it is glowing still. Um, it looks marvelous. All the other weapons are starting to look like tarnished, a bit like rusty and whatnot. This sword looks like it's been made yesterday. Really pretty. There is an inscription in the middle. I'm not really sure what that's called again, but like, you know, the, the indent in the blade in the middle, it has an inscription on it along. Uh, it's the like fuller. That. Thank you. The full. I, I, I figured you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but you're the kind of guy that knows that. I love that. <laughs> um, so along the fuller, um, Barry will remember that. Um, there um, is a word in common, uh, and it says twilight. This looks like a very fine weapon to you. What's is exactly it? magical about it still, you can't really tell without either using it or like really discerning it. But yeah, this is a very good sword. So the rest of the... Uh... The rest of the the text on there, 
Can I tell what language that is, even if I don't speak it? Like I can, I can tell what Spanish looks like, even if I can't speak it. Fair. Um, no, it is, it is just the word twilight that is on there uh, and it is written in common. Okay. I let everybody know that there's twilight on there written in common <laughs> and it's very magical. Suggestion. Should we grab it on our way out so we don't have one more skeleton running into our bags? I don't particularly yeah. care about this sword. I mean, I know, our I main can't... goal is, uh, uh, what was it, mace or something. Do we have anybody that can actually wield the sword? I think I could technically wield it, but it's not... Like It's, it's not I really of any use to us to at it. all, is it? It was Great sword, uh, yeah. That's a martial weapon one for once, and it's a strength-based weapon, so yeah, I don't think exactly. that's um, relevant for anyone here, so... I mean, it's, I yeah, could okay. technically start Artificers more time, could, so but yeah. <laughs> if it's magical, <laughs> I don't... If, it's, if it's magical, I'm not sure if I can put an infusion on it. Uh, uh, I would need you, to read up on it. So, I but believe I don't you can. It. I believe a fusion is sent loose from, from magic. Okay. Yeah, but still... <laughs> But this, like, and this is this is a husky weapon, like you know, like in, you're you're a little fellow, so like. <laughs> All right, so you couldn't use it effectively either because you're a small I, creature. I can yeah. only touch non-magical objects and imbue them, so I can't do okay. anything with magical ones. So nothing on magic. All right. So I couldn't use it. But it could still be something like worth your while. Magical weapons are hard to come by. Yeah, it, apparently a light bulb goes for a hundred gold. So, uh, right. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and this you can actually use to kill someone. So, <laughs> I mean, on our way out, we already desecrated two graves. You can do a third. Yeah, let's let's. We can probably come back well, to it on the way out here. Sure, keep the desecrating I, going. Uh, Ellie, you want to check the door uh, for traps on that side. Um, give me an investigation check. Uh, the door itself looks, again, like one of those gates. Big, wooden, iron-bound, like the ones you've seen before. So with a five, you don't notice any traps on this door. But even with a five, I am going to give you something for the sheer fact that you're investigating this door. <laughs> There's one thing that you do notice, even if you rolled a net one on this. It's a door. This place... It, it's a, it's a <laughs> gate. <laughs> yeah, with that one, it would be like, oh, it's, a, it's a window. Um, <laughs> looking at this, um, this place has been neglected for at least 50 years. And seeing as it is a crypt, possibly even longer, because who goes down a crypt every single day? That being said, this place is caked in dirt, dust, and filth, as it should be after 15 years. As you look at this door, you don't notice any traps, but you do notice one thing. The dust near the bottom of the door has unsettled. This door has been recently opened and closed again. Would there be footsteps going in and out? There's none. And that you would, have, would be able to see in the dust as well. Exactly. But the dust near the door is just slowly settling, as if it's just been recently closed. Hmm. What if the other winch opens this door too? And so it opened when we opened the first time, and then it closed when we closed the other one. Like, well, if, I, like they're connected to that same winch. I can't help but notice that. Is that two unlit sconch sconches by the uh, door as well? Uh, they are, yes. Um, Tully will uh, oh, no. cast Firebolt to light both of them. Light. Uh, sure. You now have two lit sconces. Okay. Is it a gate like the other ones with the winch? Uh, it's identical to those, yes. Uh, hmm. Should we go and try the other door again? Uh... I'm thinking yeah. if you can somehow just block both winches in the open position. Well, we got the we got that door wedged open, so like it doesn't matter if that one's... Wait, I must have, like, what, what do these door, like, doors or gates, what do they look like? Like, can you see through? Is there bars? Like, anything? No, no, they're, they're basically a completely solid, hard wooden wall that is iron-bound every, like, couple of inches. It's very strong. Are you stomaturgy trying to open it? 
It doesn't budge. Okay. Well, had to try. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so should we go back up, pull it up, put another uh, coffin down there, and keep going like that? That's... Yeah, One, two, three, I think... Four. I would... Actually, yeah, five be more coffins before, to go. before you do that, I'd like to search this room to actually find anything that could potentially open that door from in here. Oh, yeah, okay. Check. Unless you want to go as far as, like, ripping open the bodies themselves to see if anything has been, like, hidden into wrappings, you don't find anything. No protruding stones or in the Nothing wall. Nothing whatsoever. Or... Hmm. Oh, and let me turn on the sconces for you. Forgot that. There you are. Beautiful. Also, uh, Nibralin has his torch back out, too. Oh, yeah, sure. After we um, so uh, at this point, what I would like to know is everyone is is everyone going to go up and try to win again, or are some going to stay down and see what happens? Like, what is the division here? Like before I'm not trying to split the party, but I can Atoli. imagine you might want to. <laughs> um, Atoli, Atoli would stay with uh, LED for the time being. Yeah, Elodie, if you want to do the walkie-talkie, we could do what we did last time. Oh, yeah, sure. That is something you can do. Yeah. Uh, I guess... Who do you want to do it to? Uh, to Nespip and to Barlam. Touch us with your walkie-talkie. So unless it's important, I will switch to map for now. I won't be like keeping switching. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you guys run up. Which winch do you try? Uh, the one the that's second. closest to this one or the second one? The furthest one away. away. The furthest one away? All right. As you go to the one that is furthest away and you turn that winch, this gate indeed opens. Okay, hearing that it opened, I'm gonna uh, block it with the rod again, like yep. the other one. And uh, can you guys uh, push one of the uh, coffins down there yourself, or do we need to come back to help? I, I let Lel Ellie know that. Well, with the three of you, yeah, I you guess... should be able to do that. Okay, well, just all of us, we can. Once again, Molly's got her ropes, and we're pushing the cabin underneath there. And we move. This is such a crazy situation, by the way. Like, I'm loving the fact that you're using the sarcophagi for this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm making a point to do the same thing. We have the candles there. Let's all try and set it up the same way. Absolutely. That is fine. And then I assume hearing that it's set up, I'm going to drop the gate down again. All right. Um, as you release it, the gate over here will drop down and hit the sarcophagi, cutting the body over there clean in half. And I guess we go back down. All right. As you uh, come down here, Atoli, you, you feel a rumbling in the chest that you have with you. Nah. Um, guys, the, uh, the, the, the the saint is getting restless in here. I would like to uh, before you do anything. Um, yes. In the chest next to her, I have a holy symbol. I'd like to dump that into the urn as well. <laughs> what kind of religious symbol is it? It doesn't say. It just says a holy symbol. <laughs> Generic holy symbol. Well, I, a holy I, I, symbol. I, I, consider it. Yeah. He I says was a, cleric, a, a cleric or a paladin can use the symbol. So it would make the most sense that it is something of the sacred flame because mm -hmm. that is really the predominant religion over here. Um, I like it. <laughs> Give me a religion check and let's see if you luck out. <laughs> we could also dump some holy water in. I have that too. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you throw that in as well, that's advantage. <laughs> Turn her, turn, turn her into a clay ball. Let's make a cocktail. 
<laughs> oh, that's terrible. Uh, okay, crap. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but, but you you did the holy water also roll again. Like you you will oh, have one. Right. Okay. <clears throat> um. Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. That'll be enough. Um, so, as you might have, uh, this is especially for Nibarla, when you look at the five panels, there are five steps mm -hmm. to getting a body back to rest. The final part is saying a prayer or basically making, you know, finalizing the, the ritual. Um, it's a very makeshift way to do so, but I imagine sprinkling holy water and dumping a religious symbol on her counts as doing the final rites. <laughs> okay. So she is at ease. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody want a uh, a clay saint? <laughs> Saint Brenner, who is now a clay automaton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a tiny little statue out of her, put it in the windowsill back at home. <laughs> that is absolutely terrible. I love it. Uh, are right. any of the <clears throat> other skeletons we cut in half moving? Uh, no, they're not. Okay. Because their candles are still lit. Well, so are Saint Brenna's. Yeah, well, she's but now, she, but she's now moist. <laughs> she's now, she's now, her rights have been preserved. And well, I guess you're right. We probably should say a prayer for these guys too, shouldn't we? It's a little weird. It, does it not strike anybody else that if she's not at rest? She never received her final rights from the people that actually put her to rest. Oh shit! The the reason she's not at rest is that the delirium soaked oh. water was dripping down on her candles and on her, and that probably got her back up, from yeah, what so, I understand. So they, yeah, then, so they probably did it, and then it, the candles went out, so she woke up, and then we relit the candles, but had to finish the rest of the rites, which we just, which you just did by. So if it. we take, if we you remove her back. from here, she's going to wake up again then. Because she'll be out of range of the candles. That's a very. That's why it doesn't make sense to me right now. Either she uh, was never a lot more either, holy water. <laughs> either she never got her full right, her, her her rights from from everything that was supposed to happen, or the delirium woke her up, and now getting her final rights put her to sleep again. Something doesn't add up. Give this is a very good discussion, and I was hoping this will start at some point. So here we are. Give me a um, give me a medicine check. I do that too because Nabral, like I said, he's been pretty uh, obsessive about. Oh, I guess it sure. doesn't matter. So it doesn't you matter. Can still, <laughs> you can still throw. See if if you if you deduct the same thing, but uh, you're gonna get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. She <laughs> said. Yeah, it's it's weird. She's dead. She should she shouldn't like you know stand up again. Um, Atoli, you um, I mean you're a sorcerer. You have been trained by the Amethyst Academy. You've seen necromancy. Necromancy in this world is a little less shunned as it is in most other worlds. It's still tr uh, treated as a little bit like icky, in the corner of like uh, don't touch it um, too much. <laughs> but it is still like a valid type of magic. You know that um, raising someone from the dead really usually requires one of two things. It requires any form of like um, religious um, uh, pursuit to get someone back to, to their corpse and, and return from the dead, which is still technically necromancy. That is usually what clerics and whatnot do when they want to recall someone from the dead. But there is another way to get someone back, which is through magic. Uh, and these are like speak with dead and whatnot. Those are not religious in any shape or form. It's just pure willed through magic. Knowing this and piecing what just happened in your pack together with the situation, how you found St. Brenna, uh, I think, yeah, you can piece together that the dripping out of the candles is one thing. But it's the delirium as well that's what's at, what's at stake here. Dripping out the candles would disturb the burial rites. But if this was just a normal, ordinary situation, that would be unfortunate. And you could call it consecration, uh, like deconsecration, but that's really about it. A body wouldn't return from the dead just because you put out their candles. Now, the fact that there is delirium here, which is magically infused something, apparently was the final straw to get these bodies back from the dead. So, <clears throat> the place in good old-fashioned terms is actually haunted. Haunted by magic. That is a good conclusion. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. Super. Oh. Um, Ellie, <laughs> you wanted to crawl underneath the door, I saw. Um, this rogue is gone. You uh, were the first to get into the second room. Um, and uh, you will see the following. In the next room, uh, you see a rather large circular chamber. The middle of this chamber is a giant pyre made of wood, and on top of it is a giant mountain of ash. Like, this pyre has been lit many, many times through actual fire. Beyond that, you notice that there is a very large statue here. This statue looks gorgeous. The other statues that you've seen so far upstairs and in the garden and whatnot looked great in their own right, like they were made by, by craftsmen, but this one is a cut above the rest. It's made of solid uh, marble, um, and it is depicting a uh, male person um, who is clad in full plate armor and has a, uh, and this is all made of marble, uh, has a sword to its side and a shield resting against his other leg. Before I go any further in detailing, uh, let's see if you recognize who this is. Give me a religion check. Uh, Atoli, you don't you don't really care or know. Uh, no, I don't really care. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I, I know your stance towards religious is like as yes, a religious dude. Like, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, whatever. Uh, probably, like, same for you. Maybe not in the, like, I don't care part, but like, you're not sure. Because uh, I think you would be a little bit more, like, you know, inclined to, like, no, it is religion after all. Uh, Nebarlin, you do recognize this. Uh, being new to these lands, you have uh, seen this statue here and there, and you maybe even asked in your travel, like, who is that, by the way? This is the one and the only Saint Vitruvio the Jesus of this faith, if I may. Um, oh. this, is the big head, this is the big head honcho. And there's a lot of statues of this guy everywhere. So uh, it comes to no surprise that this statue should have been somewhere in this chapel. Beyond what I just told you, this statue is standing not like a superhero or whatever, but rather his arms are outstretched and held upwards a little bit. And on top of his outstretched hands rests a scepter. It is a gorgeous weapon, and it looks size-wise more like a quarter staff than an actual scepter. But it is really pretty. Um, it looks like this. Well, I guess Nebarlin recognizing who that is and seeing that they're there for the scepter of St. Vitruvius, would say, I think this might be a good contender for the scepter of St. Vitruvius. Eh, just another religious symbol. <laughs> oh, don't touch it! Okay. Uh, well, Elodie's checking for traps. Okay. Uh, sure, you can check for traps. Give me a perception check. That is fair. Sure. Nice. Yeah. Uh, even though you don't uh, immediately recognize uh, who this was, uh, you will immediately recognize being a rogue. Uh, this is a statue made of one solid piece of marble. There's no moving parts to this. Ergo, there's no traps. Oh. Um. Grab it and run. I will... I, I'm going to hold my amulet that I got in, and since I don't have thistle here, I got to do it myself. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to grab it. And Great. Oh, crap. It up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't so. take long. <laughs> uh, As you, uh, do you have gloves on, by the way? Uh, well, yeah, normally I have gloves on. Okay. He's got the uh, leather uh, like, glovey. Yeah. Yeah. Would make sense. Um, as you touch the, um, the scepter, you will hear a very booming voice in your mind telepathically. 
and it says the following. Darkness leaves a heavy burden on the heart. The light brings freedom from the weight of sin. If you would take up my scepter, it is not enough to merely bear the light. You must illuminate yourself. As no! You grab this weapon. It feels like it weighs a ton. And you come uh. out. Oh, oh, I, oh, crap. This is going to be some sort of test. And there's a which fire is why... there. Fucking. Yeah. Wait a second. Did only he heard that? Yes. You can okay. totally relate this, by the way. Like, it's not stunning you, paralyzing you, nothing whatsoever. But you were the only one that heard this. I, I will relay that and, and say that it is heavy as shit. <laughs> yeah. Then Phoenix will, will walk up to you and just... Can we get that speech uh, on text? Sure. Well, what is Felix? Yeah. He'll just you uh, tap your armor and cast light on it. <laughs> now I'm glowing. Okay, uh, so... No, you are you're... illuminated. So uh, you cast light on uh, Nibarlan's armor, right? Yes. Do you give it another try? Or cast it on me. Cast it on me personally. Like, touch me and do it. I mean, you could be caught it as an object. Oop. No, no bother I, itself is glowing. Himself is no, glowing. you can only do it on your armor. So you can't do it on the person oh, okay. itself. So your armor okay. is now giving off uh, a glow. And I try and pick it up. It is light as a feather. What?! Well done. Felix, I'm so glad. I was I was about to ask you for holy oil and, and light light something on fire. This is this is way better. All right. Calm down, Faramir. <laughs> that actually worked, yes. <laughs> it was supposed to be a bad joke, but okay. <laughs> I was thinking about oh, lighting you... the steel defend on fire and having it carry it around. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was considering the fact that I'm carrying currently carrying Saint Brenna. Maybe that would work as well because, like, she's, yeah. Um, but she's kind of illumin probably... <laughs> illuminated. <laughs> this is going to be another problem. If we want to carry the, it outside, we're going having a re uh, beacon lit while we walk around Breckenheim. Oh crap! Um. I mean, we, we can try to cover, like, only Wait, light if, some little... What if you put it down, like, no, no, it's a quarter step, a quarter step, like, how large was it? It's, it's quarter half size. It is definitely a scepter, but, like, a big one. Damn it. Another idea. Uh, Felix will touch the scepter and cast light on it. Uh, that diminishes the light that uh, Nibarlan has, right? You're at, you can only have one at a time active, or two? Uh... I'm not sure. Uh, Let me have a look. There was the pull description. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not concentration. concentration. Yeah, the but spell ends if you cast it again or dismiss it, dismiss it as an action. So you can only have it on one object at a time. Okay. Yeah. So you do that, and the barlin goes for the floor. <laughs> oh, okay. that thing is heavy so, as shit all of a sudden. <laughs> so the scepter glowing is not enough. <laughs> no. What if pass. I can just imagine this, like in the bar and standing there like wow this is really oh. <laughs> I'm like on the ground like this going <laughs> Yeah. Like a fire roll trying to lift to... up like a dumbbell. Like <laughs> You're going to have to cast on me, bro. I I guess... Hold on I a minute. Pinned. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm going to try like I'm going to go for a bit of a Hail Mary here. Um Atoli's okay. going to uncork the urn of St. Brennan and scoop out a little piece. Uh, like a couple of fingers, and then smear it on the scepter. Ew. Um... It's holy water, a holy symbol, consecrated, and a saint. How much more light okay. do you want? <laughs> um, okay. So there's some Brenna paste on the <laughs> scepter right now. Uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> 
wasn't on my bingo card for this weekend, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> um, I think beyond unsettling a couple of your party members, unfortunately, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. So, oh well. So we we can we actually can go out with it. So I I, I can hold it now. We're going out. Only I'm glowing. Um, hmm. There is a pyre here. So my initial thought was, we're gonna. Have, I know you're getting Boromir or whoever. <laughs> not maybe. I mean, we could just go out, and I could just be glowing. I mean, we can... yourself, initial thought was to light yourself on fire. Yes, but I wasn't going to light my whole self on fire. Just like a hand on fire, so I don't die immediately. Um, you can just <clears throat> cast it on like a single glove or something, and wrap that blo uh, glove in uh, some fabric so it doesn't shine through. Maybe that's enough. Oh yeah. Or wrap give it the a, yeah, give it a try. fabric around yeah, your hand, yeah. around the scepter, so the glowing hand is touching the scepter, but it's all wrapped in <laughs> fabric. Yeah, so I, I guess move it to my hand at this point. Then let's see if I get if I go back to the ground. Uh, that you're still wearing your glove, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the scepter doesn't glow, but there is that sort of a crackling of magic that you can almost sense when you're touching it. Can you now so just put the scepter uh, in your backpack? Since you are still yeah. illuminated. Well, I mean, how big is the scepter? A quarter staff. Okay, well, I can secure it the same... I guess I would have to secure it the same way I have my spear secured. Um, yep. As you do that, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so... I got a glowing hand. Wait a second. <laughs> now wrap something around to your hand. Okay. I wrap something around my hand. I, 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 I cover my hand. Yes. And so you wrap a cloth around works. your hand. Wrap a cloth around my hand. And okay. Then... Uh, you go for the floor. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I pull it back off. Okay, let me yeah. work. Have we tried lighting the scepter? Yeah, I tried that. Yeah, we just, yeah, didn't work. Yeah. Uh, for all intents and purposes, by the way, like of how fast you're going for the floor, this is 750 pounds. <laughs> so I'm so <laughs> I'm just I'm going. Bah! Yeah. What's yeah, you don't even capacity? bounce. It's like a solid like thick, on the ground. <laughs> What's the carrying capacity of the steel defender? Uh, uh, good question. Probably not that much. It has a strength of 14, so plus two. I think you need to calculate that, right? You yeah. can click on D and D Beyond on the weight carry it, but yeah, it won't be nearly enough. No, because no, it, it took it. It took more because I'm assuming it's probably going to weigh as much as the sarcophagus, and it took all of us to move that. So, or yeah. three, four of us to move it. Unless, unless the scepter doesn't care about the steel defender because it's a um, an uh, inanimate object. object. Yeah, it's not yeah. a... It's a construct. Can okay. we try to put the scepter down on the floor and have the steel defender just nudge it? I'm um, gonna set it down. If you set it down and try to nudge it, it feels like you're trying to move a sarcophagus. So even for the steel defender? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I... <sighs> try oh. making your hand glow? What if... Well, I, well, my and, hand's still glowing. I, I just I, and wrap it with the scepter, but then you're carrying around the scepter. I want to try one more thing. Okay. Uh, I will quickly cast uh, unseen servant. That is yes. specifically not a creature; it's a force. Yes. And uh, unseen servant, pick it up. Um, does it have the strength to carry seven hundred and fifty pounds? Uh, I don't think so, no. Then it can't. Okay. Can it carry stuff around while it, something is lit nearby the scepter? 
Is this like if, if you hold like the glove nearby or whatever? No, you can't. No, I, no, I had a torch when I walked up to it initially. Correct. So and that it, didn't work either. Yeah. Um, there's okay. So I can try the glow in the dark paint, but that's still a five feet uh, long radius. But I can just uh, paint it on your palm so that when you grip the sword, you. I mean, it, I I well, could. I, mean, I think it, it's it's shown that once we cover the light, it like I have to be, I have to be illuminating the light for it to work. Yeah, but if you, if the light is directly touching the object, I think it's worth a try, right? How long would it take us to get out of here to like out of the most dangerous parts from from this point? Fifteen twenty. Traveling minutes. at a. Traveling at a normal pace, not running into anything special? Yeah, roundabouts. Anywhere below half an hour. Right. You cast light on his hand. Uh, dimmed light or whatever. I can cast darkness that's around us, but I'll have to lead us all out because you guys won't be able to see shit. I'm not sure if that so will still work because we couldn't cover it. And I think yeah, darkness counts as covering the light. No, because it's it's it's, it's non it's non only non magical. If the light still shines inside the darkness, but there's a larger sphere that surrounds us, that surrounds us, will give it a bit of a buffer in the outer reaches. But around, but inside, there'll still be light for for us. Um, before we so there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, thistle's thistle's dead, which means something out there killed her, which means that something's gonna be waiting for us when we walk out. Yes, we'll be in darkness, but. Yeah, yeah, I forgot You're the one about that part. Fight. I forgot about that part. The, the the second part is the second thing to do is since we're all in here trying to figure this out, I'm going to look around and see if there's any sort of indication that if <laughs> basically if I'm looking for writings, I'm looking for inscriptions, something beyond just the instructions I got from the ethereal voice. Uh, give me a investigation check. Uh, all right. Uh, with a dirty 20, uh, you will not see any inscriptions whatsoever, but looking around this room and looking at the fact that there's a pyre down here, you get the feeling that this might have been uh, the original chapel. Like back in the olden days, maybe they made it underground or something. You're not 100% sure because you're not like religiously inclined like that. Um, but uh, since there is a pyre down here that must have been lit at some point, this might have been the original chapel. It's not helping you whatsoever in in like uh, getting more instructions, but that's what you're getting from this room. Is there any ventilation okay. uh, for the pyre? Uh, there isn't. Uh, but uh, you had a dirty twenty. If you look directly above this room, you will notice that the um, the ceiling itself is completely shut, but the middle of that seems to have been blocked off. So something has been put in place there that might have been an opening at some point. I'm going well, it, it to. It would have been, or everybody down here would have died. Yeah, I'm. I. I, I think it'd be worth. It. So, if we need to, I think Atoli, uh, have a frost ray or whatever ready, because I think we should light the pyre. Um, we it's here for a reason. It's here for a reason. I think they uh, just built a new chapel above it and covered everything up. So we'll just uh, mono uh, carbon monoxide poison us if you light it. Well, yeah, I'm not. Well, lighting oh, I'm that. saying. Well, my thought is so. It if we think of though we we gotta think about this like it's a normal chapel. Forget everything that happened to it. You're you're a you're a, a cleric or whatever who's going into the chapel and to do your normal ceremonies. And you have the scepter there. The pyre's here for a reason, and you can only pick up, and the scepter's here as well. I, I, I think we should light the pyre if we need to. Atoli can snuff it out with a frost, whatever, and go, because I mean, frost turns to water, it'll put it out. I don't think this will help us, but we already know that you need 
some kind of light magic to carry it. So, and uh, as you said, the torch doesn't didn't help you. So why would a wood fire, a bigger one, help? Well, well, why would the candles work on the? I mean, it's a it is a, it is supposed to be a sacred duty and flame to keep the the pyre going. So I mean, he that, might that's be onto my, that, something. That's my thought. That's my thought is like this is because the chapel above it was built on top. Like this was. Think of though that this is the chapel that the priest would go to, and part of their duty is to light that. How far like is it to that the... block in the ceiling? That blockage in the ceiling? It's like five feet, uh, ten feet. Yeah, uh, around about ten feet. Yeah. And it is like, is it a wood board or something that's fallen down from above, or to block the hole, or? Um, you said it was blocked off. Yeah, it's um like you can see a very very like basically you, you can see a difference in color uh, over there. So something must have been placed in it or over it. We try to open up that path first and then light the fire. Yeah. Um. Um, before we try to open anything up or do anything, above us there were people still in chapel. Okay, so, so we yeah. basically smoked them out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so I guess, would this be this location, would this be below the ch like, I guess, would we be able to determine logistically that we're Wait, hold up. A part are you saying yeah, are you saying that the chapel is actually right on top of where we are right now? That's well, there's no in between. There's yeah, that's between, yeah. What if above us is where the ashes of the actual flame drips down into here? To dispose of the ashes of the uh the, the thing above us. That would conjoin the rooms in one kind of, in some kind of way. I'm also concerned about the thing that LOD said. I'm not sure how much more time we have. Yeah. Or what yeah, is happening um, there. We killed this long way down here with us. I, I think we should, honestly, we could light it and then, because we got some time before this thing fills up with smoke, we could light it, see what happens, and then either put the flame out and, and then, or just leave the room. Because, <laughs> because, I mean, we aren't going to get smoked out like immediately. I don't like that idea because then we will be on a on a very tight time limit uh, if we need to get out of here. Yeah. Atoli raises his hand upwards towards that blockage area and does mm -hmm. uh, a quick uh, poison spray. I'd like to see if the um, gases actually get sucked out of the room or if they get pushed back down. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's, um, that's, yeah. You will notice minimally that a bit of your poison spray slips through the cracks upstairs. Okay, so it's venti it's ventilation. It gets sucked out from here. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think I think I think we should light. It. I think I I, I I totally get ready with the frost thing to put it out if we need to. We'll take a step uh, back and so prepare. I'm, I'm going to have my well, I, I'm still wearing the the aim the holy symbol of the sacred flame. Uh, Just to make sure, um, I believe Felix said like he was against his idea, but Elvi does so as well. Like I'll be her voice right now because oh, she okay. says that. Oh, but she won't stop you if oh, you okay. want to do it. <laughs> okay. Thank for Felix. Um, I think it's your funeral. I think uh, I'm gonna get it's on your this funeral side pyre. so we can, if we need to get out, <laughs> we can. Uh, totally, you gonna you, you got my back here. Is, it, is it us doing it? Mm -hmm. Sure. He's gonna move himself into a bit more uh, easier to escape position. <laughs> okay. How are you um, okay. uh, handling the um, the whole scepter issue right now? 
Well, now I'm still holding it because I got the light on me. <laughs> okay, just want to make sure. So you have an exposed, glowing, glowing glove, and you either have it strapped to your to your person or holding it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, although I guess I guess in order to make sure I guess to make sure this works, probably shouldn't have a. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have a glowing glove to if I make sure it works. Um, but I guess in this case, uh, I'm going to set it down and then take off my glowing glove and and then kind of set that down too. Mm-hmm. And then try and pick it up with my other glove and see if I can pick it up with my other glove. <laughs> Gloved hand. You can't. Okay. Well, okay, that... All right. Atoli, you uh, you ready to to give this a whirl? He shrugs and just remains uh, just remains on the ready. Okay. Uh, I don't deal with so religious, nothing else religious written... stuff, so. So it, is there nothing else written? There's nothing else on the statue. All I, all I know is basically. It's just there's no writing in this room. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, all right. I, I guess I'm gonna, I guess I'll say a little prayer and like the, like the thing hold my. What do you, li- what do you light? Because there's a couple of things that you can light in here. There's also a couple of candles. Oh. I guess and if we're doing this, we might as well do it the, do it the right way. I'm gonna light the candles before I light the right. fire. Then, fair enough. As for the prayer that you're saying, um, are you a believer of the sacred flame? Well, I'm a believer in Saint Vitruvius because he just talked to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, proof goes a long way with faith, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, you're there. Hi. Oh, damn, um, he's actually real. <laughs> uh, shit. Um. <laughs> You know what? That is actually a very fair point. I would imagine that that would do something to you. Um, you do a prayer. Give me a religion check. Oh, it was just about to be one of the 13. famous Nabarland low rolls. Yeah. All right. Um, you do your best to say a bit of a prayer um, uh, towards the sacred flame. I imagine you don't really know the scripture, but it comes from the heart. Yeah, that's all I can do. Um, I I say yeah, I say a bit of. A, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm more praying that I, I'm more praying that I don't die. I'm asking, hey, don't kill. It's, it's kind of more of what I'm praying about. Is this is this where uh, uh, Atoli in the background staying there, like the best Hermione Granger? Like, no, 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 you're saying it wrong. It's <sighs> yeah, he's giving me some sorcerer <laughs> tips on how to properly say this. <laughs> It's um, not Leviosa, it's Leviosa. <laughs> All right, and then you light the prayer? Uh, yeah, I'm, so the prayer... I'm, so my father was a paladin, so I know, I know religious how it's supposed to look, even if I'm not like, extremely <laughs> religious myself. So I am... So he is doing his best to, to imitate what he thinks a proper <laughs> religious... Would, it would look like. So... <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm getting Ace Ventura vibes. Like, oh, yeah, I know, right? All right, <laughs> <and> then. <laughs> and then he, of course, is 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 praying Saint Patricia to not not kill him, basically. Okay. And then you know he, he's also got his his uh, borrowed holy symbol. Let's put it that way: borrowed holy symbol from the guy who tried to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a little then, bit of uh, Bri- 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 Brianna Tar? <laughs> <laughs> You're that one guy from the mummy, like... you know, with all the chains. We can paint this one. This one. We can paint. We can paint a little uh, saint symbol in your forehead if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and he lights all the, the fire, and then he lights the right. fire, and kind of. Yeah, there we go. He lights the fire. So you light the pyre after you've lit the candles and to the best of your ability said a prayer. 
the boiler, as you do this, you feel as if you have done something good. You feel oh. filled with a warmth as you are blessed with illumination. You ah. actually completed the oh, ritual no. of the sacred flame. <laughs> what? No! You are now illuminated. You are illuminated. Okay, <laughs> your body, your entire body, sheds a bright light for the next hour. Oh, no! Oh, God. This is even worse. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's... <laughs> Well, I, I guess I pick up the scepter then, because we're all good. Which is light as a feather. It's <laughs> <laughs> so <Awesome>. funny. <laughs> That's all he can't help. Like, he's literally standing there behind him, and as the barlin turns around, it's like, he's glowing and everything. And she's just like... <laughs> you look like an Asimar in heat. Like, it's yeah. just like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> should, should we put out the fire before we before we suffocate? No, because, because that, the that upstairs will also fill with smoke. So that is a good point. Um, obviously, it's a pyre, and that like this is old wood, so all that smokes. Um, the smoke that is coming from this pyre is partially indeed going through the cracks at the top, but the amount of smoke coming from this pyre is more than the ventilation shaft, if you would call it that, uh, can handle. Um, so the room is slowly filling up with smoke. Yeah, that is a good point. Do, do we want to get out of here, or totally do you want to shoot yeah, it with no, some frost and try no. and put the fire out? Because, uh, I don't know, I, I, I feel like putting that out is just going to do something bad as well. I don't want to be responsible for that. Let it go out of its own. Okay. Alright, well, you rush into the, um, the room with the, um, uh, with the twilight sword. Do you uh, rush past it and go out? I ain't touching that thing. It's magical. Mm. I still ain't touching it. I, you know what? I I got I got blessed by Vitruvius. I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> cool. Uh, you take with you a um, a great sword called Twilight. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> so out of this dungeon, we got the scepter, we got the saint, and we got the great sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Brenna paste. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. The scepter, the saint, and the and the sword. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got the three S's we came for. <laughs> this is so terrible. All right, it's fucking horrible. You go back upstairs. I need to look up a you word. Move. Like I got a word in my mind. I don't know you what move the Blondie word. out from under me. I I can't. I can't. Oh, I love it. Stuck under anything. Yes, I can do that. Uh, oh, no, that's not you. Hey, that isn't. You know what I mean? Is Blond... I think Blondie is underneath isn't her. me. Oh, is she? She got. I moved her underneath me, and <laughs> there it is. Okay, okay. There we go. Do we want to take try to take the other exit? Uh, that one went directly into the. Chapel with the other people. I'm not sure about that. Either that, or we sit and wait. For... Nah, we can't do that because he's fucking glowing. <clears throat> yeah, I need the, glow the thing to is the scepter. Next to the graveyard, we have a missing bird. So that's also not great. I would uh, be for going out then. Going up inside. I, mm. so, you know what? I think there's a very easy solution solution to this problem. Oh yeah, because the, there's stairs with, with the methods. There's stairs we can go up. Uh, uh, there's a gate there, Elodie. But we'd be walking. Oh, shit. Okay. 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 It so, so visible. <laughs> okay, you, so why, if we okay. go, hold up. Why didn't you turn? The guy that's literally glowing invisible. Because that doesn't work. I tried that last session. Ah, okay. I still, it glows I, I still would. I would still have light. It just would come from nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, but that makes like um, you so, you scared a bunch of bandits to believe in those ghosts around here. So, you know, light walking well, around. Well, here's my here's my <laughs> idea. Feel so it, you little shit. <laughs> there's guys. There's guys. There's there's people upstairs. If we go up through there, I walk out. 
with a scepter of faint saint Petrius glowing and I cast thaumaturgy and come out with a righteous holy anger and say what the fuck are you doing in my chapel I'm still I, gonna get mugged my swamp I'm gonna get mugged <laughs> <laughs> I think Felix is gonna check if there are people in the back entrance exactly Felix is invisible and will try to take a peek. LED is still on like one HP and everything, right? No, she got healed up some. I gave her some delicious berries. Yeah, thirteen. Okay. Get her on her feet. Yeah, those works. What the fuck are you doing? Thirteen out of eighteen. All right. Uh, so you're going up through the same uh, gate, and uh, Felix is going first. Anyone else immediately following him? Or like, what? What's the plan here? We're waiting for a signal or something. I'm yeah, gonna see what he sees first. I'm gonna stay out of sight of the trap door, but to hear if anything happens upstairs. Sounds good. Um, then I'm gonna bring it up to the ground level. Um, Felix, the first thing that you will notice as you come up is that there are multiple people there. Oh, what did you say? And that's what message me, yes. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that there are people there who are talking. They are all uh, discussing something, it seems. And here we are. Uh, let me bring you forward first. Uh, the trapdoor itself, by the way, is still like open. It's like leaning against the back of the statue, which it's kind of inconspicuous if you're not looking for it. Like the hole itself isn't, but like the, the thingy itself is. As you come up here, uh, there are several bandits here who are talking to one another. What you're catching if you come up here uh, is that they're saying something along the likes of, I told you it was the scepter over here in this statue, that silver thing, that was the scepter. Someone beat us to it. They took it. I knew it. They wouldn't bury it in the crypts. This is something holy. They need ready access to it. They just put it in the statue. Nobody saw it. And now someone did, you doofus. Okay. Felix goes back and tries to get everyone together a bit away from the entrance. You don't have to move the scene, I think. No. Because I just remembered something. Uh -oh. I still have the uh, uh, unseen servant, because it's not concentration. And it lasts one hour. And those are the same bandits. He will <laughs> quickly take a moment, go down in one of the burial chambers, and have the unseen servant pick up a skull. <laughs> that is freaking funny! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk about That'll wake up the skeleton after a little while, but like that, that takes a couple of minutes. You'll be long gone by then. So sure, yes. you take a skull with you. <laughs> yeah. So there's a skull floating, uh, floating through the crypt, and can someone help me with a bit of light on this skull? I can help you. Uh, with dark I can help yeah. you with darkness. I can help you with light. You do... I... Oh yeah, cast a light. I've got uh, my 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 glow in the dark paint again. And it's magical uh, light, and bright light in a five foot radius, and dim light in an additional five feet. On the and I'm gonna the skull, so the eyes, the eyes glow. Oh god! That's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we have a spooky, glowing, floating I... skull, I... and spooky, scary skull. Can I? Oh. Can I reach? <laughs> can I? Can I cast thaumaturgy from where I am down, hidden? behind it and cast on a church so it sounds like the skull is speaking yeah sure like that in total like you know when they see a floating skull coming out of the crypts and then hear a voice I think that by association you would imagine that that is the skull or something that's coming after it so sure mm -hmm. yes okay uh, with, what, um, I use thaumaturgy to wait a uh, second be like, let me do the introduction okay okay, okay. so well now Felix and the skull approach the end, uh, the exit, yeah. and first of all, Felix will try to do another one of his uh, maniacal laughs like they did the last time. So, just some creepy laughter coming from the hole, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then out of the darkness, like, the skull just emerges. All of those, like, like all of those crooks that are standing there, they're like, 
There it is again. I told you it was really something. And then that skull emerges, and they all like jump to the back of like you know like to the front of the garden. Like, look, look, it's manifesting. It's real. It's real. They're it's, coming for us. They aren't never in the garden yet, yet, but like they are shaking in their boots. Well, the the skull will chase them down, and Felix will quietly follow behind it and go with. You should never have come here, but now you're all mine. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. This is worse than Dragon Island. We need to go. You don't have to roll for this. This is so hilarious. They will make, they will book it. They will book it. Okay. Uh, so, Nibarlin, I will allow, are you going to try and chip in with thermometer? Uh, like, this worked, but are you going to chip in, like, for extra effect? Uh, I, no, actually, yeah, because I, I think I think having some some rumbling on the ground would have would have pitched it. Because he's got the voice covered, so I think there's going to be some rumbling on the cool. on the ground. Yeah. Are you not saying anything? Uh, no, I think I think I'll let him do the do the speaking. All right. Uh, In that case, they yeah. run off. <laughs> Felix will quickly check around if there's anyone else watching uh, the exit, and if not, he will just. Go summon the, the garden, party. Uh, the garden seems to be safe. And he will still keep the skull. I look over here for Thistle. Is there any... Uh, is she there? Is, it some, uh, uh, is she gone? So when a fae is killed, they just desummon, basically. So there's nothing there. Yeah. Okay. They, they whack, the, they whack my, my raven. That's okay. <clears throat> she will be reborn. With hmm. our that our our father of rebirth will bring her back to us. Do you say that? No, I don't. I just I'm thinking that in my head. <laughs> okay. Like I, I I know she's I know she's she'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm not. Yeah. I I, I I'm not worried. I, I I don't say it, but I'm like I know that is. I'm not worried about it. Is what I'm saying. That's fair. Uh. uh Nabalan should recover you up, or at least try to. I think if if that flame dies, I think he loses the ability to actually carry that thing. Yeah, but we can like just throw a cloak over him, so he isn't a giant. Do you have a cloak? Uh, you're, not getting, you're not borrowing mine. Nabalan should probably have uh, traveler's clothes, maybe from adventuring gear. With you, and I you think uh, there is a cloak in oh, there. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I would have. Let's see. Um, no, it's. I just have a bedroll. I don't have a cloak. Okay. Unless the bedroll is like, unless 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 the bedroll is like a literal roll, like a. I don't know if that if it's a sleeping bag or if it's a, like a like you would think like a cloak that you can. I guess Barry, that's a question for you. Uh, is is a bedroll like a sleeping bag, or is it a like blanket type thing? It's more of a sleeping bag. Okay, so I guess that doesn't work. So you don't have normal clothes with you. So as oh, I know, I have. So as I have you fine ask clothes this to yes. Nubarlin, as you ask this to Nubarlin, he says, "Do you have a cloak?" He doesn't say, "Do you have a cloak?" He says, "This." Oh, I have uh, Felix selected. Oh, Felix didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> The Barlin, where are you? There you are. Uh, you say this. None of you understand what he's saying. Maybe you catch the word cloak, but beyond that, you have no idea what he's saying. Which is that? You don't uh, recognize it. Perhaps. Fuck, this Do is I, not the best like, place I, to I discuss a, that. I know a lot of languages, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I checked. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> Do what? Do I understand what they're saying? Absolutely. Okay. You also understand, like, you actually, in, like, you asked, like, do you have a cloak? Do you have a cloak? <laughs> <laughs> I should be just try to leave and hope that nobody follows the giant light. We don't have much of a choice. I guess I'm responding back. It's like, well, yes, I am. <laughs> but it doesn't come out that way. No, when you say that, uh, you say this instead. 
I love translators. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm going to ask her to repeat what I just said then. Well, I guess she wouldn't understand that either. <laughs> <laughs> We should get going. Yeah. Yeah, we should. I, I, yeah. Let's. You just not. <laughs> I would give you my cloak, yeah. but I don't think it will fit. Try. I guess you can't. I, I can't tell you that. I can't say we could just try because you don't understand anything I'm saying. Oh, no, no, no. Elodie. I'm linked with her telepathy, her, with her, with her. We have the walkie talkie. Yes. Yeah, so I when I talk to her, I don't have to speak her language, right? True. If you do it telepathically, you can totally understand each other. Okay, so I'm. Ex I, I I guess she's. I can talk to her and be like, "What the heck's going on?" And she can explain the whole situation, and we can figure it out. So that mm -hmm. that solves that. Uh, and that's when I asked. Okay, well, I do explain it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Ellie, you're my only means of communication right now because no one else can understand me. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, we gotta get out of here. Uh, if no one's Rogue got a cloak for me to use, yeah. Rogue translator. There's no one, so no one has a cloak, and uh, that's why I asked her. No. I, uh, oh yeah, you do need to still roll the d4. Like we'll 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 uh, account it this the way you cast it, but the d4 do, does need to be rolled for your psychic uh, ability. Uh, does anyone perhaps have a shovel for me? I want to try something before we leave, or rather, you can go ahead and I'll follow. Uh, uh, what do you want to try? The problem shakes his head. Uh, I want to uh, humor my greed a bit. I got a crowbar. There's some. There's some pink glow in the soil behind the chapel. And I'm still invisible, so I might try to get something. But if we don't have the tools, then let's just get going. I don't have a shovel, I think. I don't believe no. any of you do. I got, a, I got a crowbar. That's the best I can do. Yeah, I can't really dig with that. Sure you can. It just takes a while. Oh, yeah. We've got the fault, so... Okay, four hours of communication. That's uh... right. As you uh, walk towards the uh, entrance of the chapel, there is a small congregation of people that have just left the chapel. They're talking amongst themselves, saying, I don't get it. Why is the smoke coming out of the ground? And they bump into you, Atomi. No, because I'm like kissing the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought we were alone. Well, that goes for both of us then. But it seems that somebody has lit the sacred pyres underneath. Someone got underneath the crypt. I believe so. There was a uh, group of bandits running from the uh, northern graveyard. Just up there, he points. Interesting. I told you, brother. The bandits have an eye on the scepter as well. It is no longer a secret. What do you do here, adventurer? I came to uh, to warn the. Uh, uh, can I do like a quick check? Like who do they? Who are they affiliated with? Uh, sure. Uh, give me a perception check to see if you recognize anything about them. Perception. Fuck. The only thing that you notice is that they look poor. As in, like, their robes and whatnot look second, maybe. Like, they look like they've almost been looted from the bodies over here. Like, it's that kind of, like, quality. It's no good. Um, um, I came to warn the uh, the followers of the flame that uh, we had worried that, well, I had worried that their one of their most sacred relics has been found. And, well, the bandits are trying to get to them. But I don't think they've made it out with them yet. And why would you want to tell... The sacred flame. He looks dumbfounded by the questions like, does it not belong to them? 
Their religion is vested on false hope. They do not understand the truth that is at hand. Atsoli will smile and then like lower his hood a little the, the lower his hood a little bit. Ah <laughs> we're on the same side then. So you believe in the falling fire as well then, brother? I live most of my life in Drakenheim. I'm not about to give it up now, as you can see from my own mutations. Splendid. Uh, Katja Brown, nice to meet you. And she offers you a hand. I totally will, like, uh, extend his own hand as well. As she shakes your hand, um, give me one more perception check. Not for bitch. You won't notice anything. <laughs> she gives you a firm handshake and then draws her hand back and says, it's good to see that our ranks are bolstering with every day. Sure, yes, the I sacred am. flame had good intentions, but they are misguided. And now that the meteor has finally come and shown us the way, they all but lost it. Have you ventured into the city yet? Not into the inner reaches. I am currently stationed on the outer skirts trying to deter anyone coming in from the uh, ongoings of, uh, well, you know. You do the good work, brother. And once you can do your pilgrimage and venture into the heart of the city, then you will feel the righteousness of the meteor. I hope that that day will come swiftly for you, brother. That's all it will bow, bow down, like, graciously carrying on with the act, and I appreciate your kind words. What are, are your orders for now, then? We were looking for the scepter. It was supposedly beneath the crypts, but we couldn't find an entrance. You see, inside, the stairway was blocked off by an iron door, and we couldn't find any key. We had seen that there were some bandits outside, but since it had to be underneath the chapel in the crypts, we figured we would have to find our way down below the crypts and not in the garden. You say that they found an, a way in, a way out? They made off with something? Well, it seems that they didn't make out with anything of worth or value. They were... They looked scared, as if they saw a monster, perhaps, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't the know The often have that when crossing paths with true fate. Mm, don't I know it. I made my way around the backside of the uh, uh, graveyard over there, um, just to make sure that you know nothing would get up on on my backside. And uh, I noticed that the statues seemed to move, and there's a trapdoor there. Hmm. Brothers, perhaps we should have a look inside there and see if we can find the scepter through that way. Quick question. Uh, hold on. Yes. Uh. Can they see me, first of all? Because I'm riding a giant turtle in the middle of the path. I imagine they bumped right into now. a tolly, they can totally see like you behind uh behind him, but they do sort of like a like a by association, like you you're behind yeah. a tolly. A tolly isn't defending his back, you're probably associated. A tolly is good news, you probably are too. Uh can I hear them talking? If you get a little closer, yeah, you can hear that there's a conversation going. Like they don't talk that loud. I think it would have while they were talking, gotten a bit closer, just, you know, I know him, it's good. And I'm going to tell LOD uh, with the mind link, get in the barn and try to get to the back of the graveyard. People are coming through into the graveyard now. Yeah, give me just a second. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was in the middle of talking. Like, um, Sorry. Atoli would continue the conversation before they say that they should hurry there, uh, where the conversation got cut off. Um, tell them, like, wait, you need to bring sacred candles. From inside the church. Sa There's no such thing as sacred candles, brother. You know this. To the flame there is. And this place... I can't put my my finger on it, but... There's disturbing things going on down there. It must be the faith finally utilizing the resources down there for the right cause. You see, and she turns around and she points towards like the glowing mess that's on the other this side. This is where you tell them to get in a barrel and go out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I think they could have just jumped the fence. Yeah. Sure. I <laughs> yep. 
Get the fuck out of Dodge over there. <laughs> <laughs> you see. Do you see the octarine glow over there, brother? I've had uh, many part... run-ins with the uh, delirium, as they so called it. Yes, the sacred crystal is everywhere, even here. And as it landed, its richness has seeped into the soil and has touched the immortals underneath. And through the power of the meteor, they have risen for our cause and not theirs. I tell you, brother, there is no such thing as sacred candles. There is only sacred delirium. Your word, ring, word rings true in my head, still. You have much to learn, but still, you have to do your pilgrimage, and I understand. I await for it with bated breath. Good. Brothers, we have a relic to find. Onward! And they move. As they do, by the way, they see you, Nespip, riding this big-ass, like, you know, turtle device contraption that you have. Um, and they stop for a moment, and they say... Are you, with, <laughs> are, are you with him? I, I'm with him. I'm uh, acting as a guard. We will, keep you in your prayer. we will keep you in our prayers. You understand, of course, material possession are a sin. You too have much to learn. I, I understand. Good. <laughs> Onward, brothers. And they move. <laughs> As they um, move towards the graveyard, uh, all of you have uh, booked it to uh, basically like the far side of, uh, of the park, so they will not notice you. And they will indeed go down the hatch. As they do... Probably lost on deaf ears. They'll mutter something along the lines of like, oh, it's really smoky down here. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll run into a skeleton as well, so, hey. Yeah, kind of everything. Holy improvisation, Batman. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> I did not expect this. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. no, that... Um... Until he like puts up his hood again and then like turns to Nespip like we don't talk about this. Okay. This is by the way the first time that Nespip you've seen him without a hood. Uh, they've, they've seen like I, I did it like once for like a scare factor, but yeah. Also, well, I you got a good look at him. Okay. I would also yeah. imagine I'm, I'm on the same height as him. I'm not looking down on the hood. I'm actually looking at his face often. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, like he totally just turned as like, like we don't talk about this. Yeah, this, but this Nabal, here. Nabal and puked oh. up a dragon, so I'm not like that is a, that is a, <laughs> that's the weirdest you sell today. Yeah. <laughs> um. Still, not I even, um, not even top three. Let's <laughs> can can you give me a um? Let's just make it a history check. Uh, is it related to wait? Was it what is it? Is it related to magic items, alchemical objects, or technolo uh, te te technological devices? No. Not okay. Then it's normal. History. Uh... Ready to serve, my lord. Twelve. All right. Um, I'll leave it up to your own discretion whether or not you've ever heard of one two, because they're pretty rare. But if you know of this race, you will have recognized that he is one. If you don't, you will have seen that he looks almost part snake in a lot of places. You can kind of understand why he wears a hood. I I don't think I've I know of them because I was mostly focusing on engineering, basically magic and Fair. stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, he looks weird. But again, yeah. well, the well, well, up a dragon. <laughs> well, I also I want to point out too. I also want to point out that we have all seen a totally without his hood because in my uh, my special edit, he goes, he goes, and Atoli for the first time pulls back his hood and says, "Well, then, that's true. Who are we? So you actually have pulled your hood off once before. Yep, when, when we said. were, yeah. That is right. Uh, in that case, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at this point, the skull also approaches, and the servant." basically moves the jaw as Felix speaks. Uh, <laughs> do you guys think we should have a look at the glow? Maybe there are some crystals there before we catch up to the others. 
I think the, staying around here right now is a bad idea. Yeah, the bandits might be coming back. There are still worshippers down in the crypts that might be coming back. We have a giant glowing person. Well, not giant, but we have a glowing person running around. We should probably try to get out. We've got the sword. We the can followers, probably sell that. The followers of the Falling Flame is here. This is... Like, there are currently at least three parties looking for one object that we are having. Or that we have. It's time to get out of Dodge. If you say so. And greedy noises. Yeah, I mean, Ellie and me, we're still <laughs> waiting for Nesbitt to, to give the all clear. I mean, I w I'm not sure if we should go like the, out of the front, but I imagine we could communicate. It's clear now, for now, but we should get out of here. Yeah, bring the glowing man, let's go. Alright. Do you guys get back on the road out of Draconite? Atoli's getting out. We've like we've been in here for a while now, so being also this close to the thing is prone to cause mutations. All right. Um, all of you are uh, going to make it. You don't have to drag yourself off of the map. Um, you're going to go back on the road. On the road. Now, maybe yeah. five minute bio break. That's what I was going to propose. So, yes. Yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> so, let's do a five to two minutes, and I'll see you um, in a bit. Five minutes on the can. Okie dokie.
I should have made a history check on the sword. Or ask if I can do that. Because I've... Okay. Uh, I mean, unless it's oh, yeah. really of some legendary significance, how would you know something about it? I've got artificial lore, so at least I would know if, like, I would have probably studied a lot up, a lot of, I would have studied up on magical stuff, magical items and things, and it was buried well, in a crypt and has a name, so. Huh? Well, if you get a little bit of a walk back, you'd probably be like, oh, let me look at it and look at it a little closer. The problem is, uh, I don't want to do that on the way because it looks to me like it's cursed, maybe, because you're not able to speak anymore. So uh, I, just, I just had a, a fun little thought here, as I generally do when I visit the bathroom. Handing this scepter off to, well, what was it, Blackjack Mel, we decided was probably the better candidate because the other guy's tortured. I, I tell you what, more no, money to be made. That and we well, get they an allegedly audience. tortured. Yeah, and we get an audience with the Red Queen. Or the Queen of whatever. Um, handing this off to someone is going to be freaking hilarious. Well, I can tell yeah. you, I'm... Nabarlin does not want to give a... Well, I was going to bring this up, at least if I translate, but... Uh, this point, I can't speak <laughs> properly. I'm glowing. I, I don't want to just go give this to, to bandits. I need to figure out what the fuck is going on right now. <laughs> You've just been thunderstruck. <laughs> I saw that reaction, Tim. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. Also, really? Are you after the, all this time? Fair enough. <laughs> that was to be expected. Exactly. <sighs> Yeah, imagine giving this over to someone and they're just going to drop like a sack of shit with 750 pounds in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, we could store it in our hut and just say, or house or whatever we want to call it, and just say, yeah, we have the item. To pick it up, you need to light yourself on fire. <laughs> it could be a lot of fun moments to be had with this thing. I think the problem would be they will see <laughs> us walking, glowing into the city around the village a so mi minor detail as long as the rest of us don't have to follow him behind him chanting some hymn or something first of all we need to get out of the city without getting noticed yeah, that's a good point mm -hmm. my roles have been notoriously bad today I, mine too I mean I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes me well, happy. We <laughs> so you're saying it could have gone so much worse for us. So, same Brenda's resurrection uh, could have happened a lot quicker. <laughs> for one. <laughs> <laughs> it is anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes, basically. Um, so that could have happened a lot sooner. <laughs> I just like the fact that my little makeshift fucking <laughs> put it to rest actually worked. Brenna Pudi. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I feel terrible. like that, that's gonna be something we carry till the end of the campaign. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> aged five and up. <laughs> you could make some war paint out of that. <laughs> I mean, war paint. We can turn her into a little clay figure and carry her with us. I mean, we can do many things with this. Oh God, that's terrible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What was it? Two episodes we were discussing war crimes. I don't see the problem with this. And that is like honestly, I'm that really is surprised. D. &D. If, if you want to explain to someone like what D and D is, like there's so many things that you have to point out, but this is definitely one of them. Not necessarily the war crimes part, but there's <laughs> always some weird, fucked up, like random shit happening, and it's always funny. Like it's, <laughs> it's always a creative solution that you didn't think of. That's D and D. Like uh, like Felix pretend to be a ghost with a little haunted skull. Yeah. <laughs> And to just add insult to injury, like, yeah, I got some glowing, glowing, like, you know, uh, shit that we can do it on the inside, just, like, give extra effect to it, where it totally becomes, like, one of those skulls from Sea of Thieves. Like, it's creepy. Oh, God. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And in an already eerie setting, like a fucking graveyard and whatnot, this is just, like, yeah. 
in a city where everyone knows that the dead rise. So this is it, it's not even just like, you know, haha, spooky. Ooh, no, this is actually like, reality. People no, believe this, this is shit actually terrifying. Seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and apparently I just got a new quest to go on a pilgrimage to the crater. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're a you're a brother now. So yeah, you run <laughs> you run into the, the 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 final um the final faction that you hadn't talked to yet. Yeah, that's um that definitely happened, and somehow yeah. I managed to um I managed to bullshit my way out of it again. <laughs> I feel like a bard again. <laughs> so out of place. We we can make. We can make a Brenner trap. We can put the jar somewhere. We want to uh, ambush someone. Pull out the holy symbol and run away, <laughs> because then she might revive. It's like so a you... ten-minute grenade, basically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you pull the I ring mean, out. Uh, no, I mean that that I don't think that would work because she's now been actually put to rest this time. You disturb that shit. It it happens. Like that's like following the logic. If you disturb it again, basically the whole thing triggers. Damn. Yeah, if we just shake her out. Just... <laughs> yeah, only one, yeah, go somewhere. There's only, honestly, only go one somewhere. caveat, which is like it depends where you do this. That's the only thing. Oh. Like if you do this well, in Emberwood Village, there's no delirium there. But like you do it anywhere within Dragonheim, I have no reason not to allow it. <laughs> but I could just drop a, a delirium chip in there, pull out the holy symbol, and throw the grenade. <laughs> I, yeah. I. I have nothing against that. Like, you know, following the rules of, like, how they reanimate, yeah, you check all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the middle of town. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything to trade with me? Yeah, you know, this for your life. <laughs> 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 ah, or anything else shiny that you have. <laughs> I mean, I got a pocket saint. <laughs> saint, oh god. <laughs> uh. Gosh, I wonder if I can patent it. Like, I hope for your sake. Like, if you're actually planning to do shit like this, I hope for you guys' sake that you don't run into the civil order at some point. Because you're toast. Like, this is sacrilege. <laughs> what do you mean? I saved their saint. I put her to rest. I did a good thing. Fairly. Well, I did a good thing. Back, a well, she was already dead. Yeah, well, I mean, my initial thought Nobody was, knows to, was to hand it over, but I see the uses of it now. <laughs> Allegedly. Leave no witnesses behind. Uh, LED slash Isabel, are you already back? Because your camera is still off. I will take that as a no. Uh, let's give her another couple minutes. Yeah. yeah, she's moving a little slower today. Yeah. And she's still being a trooper getting through this, so. And I guess it also kind of kind of makes sense that it, I guess it's an app that Nimarlin has to communicate through her, so like we've been talk we've been typing on here <laughs> on the on the thing. Uh I guess what Nabarlin is saying, because you can't say it out loud, otherwise he says Eknuk, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, good thing to remember. I can do the magical tinkering only to non magic uh, to tiny non magical objects. So I guess a skull would be somewhat tiny. It's definitely uh, tiny. Yeah, but that's yeah, but anything bigger than that is gonna be tricky, but a skull would be possible for usually like the things that artifact like it's basically adding something funny onto something basically yeah so you can't do it on the trebuchet you can't do it on the skull sure you know <laughs> i mean tiny is basically yeah. everything smaller than small and a skull is yeah. definitely smaller than a gnome <laughs> yeah like it fits yeah, in two hands with without any effort that's tiny It's like the same size category as a spider or a scorpion or a raven. They're all yeah, which, tiny beasts. So if you ball up a raven, sorry, but if you ball up a raven, it's about the size of a skull. Sure. Welcome back. Bye. 
All right. So um, from the chapel, you are venturing back. I need to know a couple of things, obviously. First off, how are you going to go back? Stealthily. <laughs> Stealthily you in are, the same uh, way we came in, because we're going to avoid that damn hunting pack. Yeah, maybe try to go along like alleyways and stuff where we're not on, a, on an ele elevated position with many sidelines as much, much as possible. Because you are not being covered right now, right? Like you are just illuminating. Yeah, I don't have any. I mean, yeah, I, just, I asked for cloak and no one had a cloak, so. Just to be sure, do you not have the item, uh, the equipment, clothes, travelers? Or is it with a background you get this? I, I have. I have fine clothes because I'm a fine gentleman. <laughs> okay. Then it's probably background specific. Yeah, I, I, I've got a small cloak. We can put it over your head, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm wearing, I imagine the, so it, I guess Barry, is, is my skin glowing or is it my, yeah. my armor and everything? No, your, your, uh, your glove is still, unless that's been canceled out by now, uh, but your glove is glowing and your actual body, your skin is glowing. Okay, so, so it's already I, partially covered by, uh, oh, by clothes and armor. Yeah, so yeah, I, it's, it's it's not the worst, but it you'll notice it. Okay, I could put it like a little like a babushka, so just my face is glowing out. <laughs> <laughs> you pixel them. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Like, uh, hold on. The Brian going for his balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> Terrorist win. <laughs> Love it. There we go. <laughs> so uh, there we go. I'm all like, there we go. I'm going. I got it. I'm all set now. It's just one very big finger that's coming out. E T phone. No. <laughs> <laughs> all the movies are coming out today, guys. All right, um, that'll work. With that, you will still be able to carry the scepter around. Um, Felix can also do some scouting since he still have, has about 40 minutes of invisibility. Great. Um, so with that, that'll help. If you go like you know in front to basically scout out the roads, you're not going to stick to the main roads, as you said, so you're going to take the back alleys. Uh, you're going to be... Uh, you're going to be careful, and even though one of you is glowing a little bit, you are um, using the stealth that you have right now to explore the roads and whatnot that you're going through. Um, I will want to have one person, and you can choose amongst yourself, roll a survival check with advantage. Um, my survival is plus six. Oh, okay. You sound like a winner, the then. Highest. Yeah. If that's the highest, then yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. With, that, with advantage, you said? With advantage, yeah. Like, uh, all the precautions you're taking are helping you. Nice. It's an 18. Yeah. You will have no problem whatsoever getting out of the city. You will not be spotted by anyone. As you get closer towards the main road, because at some point you have to converge onto the main road, yeah. uh, you will not see any sign of this hunting pack that you uh, heard and partially saw last time. Um, as you then veer onto the main road towards Emberwood Village, you will do the trek towards Emberwood Village itself. Um, that is about a two-hour walk, so you will get there well, in uh, the uh, late afternoon. Well, I, I would like to hold up before we start going that way. Yeah. Um, Elodie, I'm going to be allowing you to kind of convey my concerns here. So the we're talking about going to Blackjack, um, but considering what we just went through and considering the state that I'm in right now with... The uh, yeah, I had I had a somewhat ma I don't know magical or divine experience. I want to go to the to the actual sacred flames people because I'm speaking in tongues and I'm glowing and I had a disembodied saint speak to me. That's my mindset or Nabarlin's mindset right now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that tongues will be the sword. You because think the tongue's you, the sword? You, yes, because you spoke norm normally before you picked up the sword, I think. You held the scepter for quite a while while we tried to figure out something to make you more inconspicuous. But I didn't, and, I didn't get the divine glow yet. But well, didn't you also say something after the divine glow to Atholi? 
Excuse me. I guess. I guess. I guess that's a way to. I guess test them. I'll set the sword down and start talking. Do I? Do I talk normally? You. You said two things. Uh, Oh, when you drop the sword right now, or. Well, if I if I'm right now, if I set the sword down, I start speaking. Do I speak normally, or yes, sir? Do I still talking talk? Oh, okay. No, so there's a sword. Speaking All right. <laughs> okay, it is a sword then. Um, That's the usual. But I still, swords. yeah, <laughs> I still would like to go to the sacred. Fl- I, now I'm saying it just normally now because I'm here with a cloak because I have divine glow on me, and I listen. I heard a saint speak to me. <laughs> Uh, we just did a holy ritual, and the we have a, th- a thought is if you have a faction that wants something the same other faction wants, would it not behoove you to lie about that faction? Yes, but they offering more money and an audience with the queen, and I'd like both of those. I've got also some thoughts on this because I'm not a fan of the Queen's Man. Uh, the person I'm searching, uh, he has been either... So the Queen's Man probably burned down my house and kidnapped or killed the person I'm searching. I'm not sure if it was just a request to them, it was, if it was out of their personal uh, interest or whatever. I don't know any of those informations. But if you side with the Queen's men, I might go against them at some point. Of course, but that's well, that's just how it goes. They're rogues and it, bandits and brigands, so it, like they have infighting all the time. That's like that's nothing new. So that's that's fine with me. What I'm curious about to finding out if the Queen, which she obviously has, are different ways that are unseen in and out of the city. I'm interested in going deeper. Well, Unseen, it, um, preferably. Also, and this is okay. If I'm trying to, like, I I don't know anything. I only know that I appeared at home and everything was gone. So I might get more information from them, but that would be the only reason to cooperate with them for me. That's right. just so, usually... so you guys know my long-term mm-hmm. alliances. Uh, do not lay with the queen's man, but my yeah. I, on on the thing that totally mentioned is so you know my background would be political negotiations, and the you wanted to get info in, in and out. Well, I think anybody who goes in and out of the city would be able to give that. Uh, my thought is also having access to someone we know, giving my background in religious orders, who we know would be able to, say, for instance, heal a curse if we didn't have a curse removal s- scroll or to revive someone. Should we be able to get get that curse and she was just dead? Who do we go to to get her up? We're hoping that the Queen's men have that kind of, have that kind of stuff that they've just gathered, but we can be fairly certain that a religious order would have that just inherent in their abilities. That's just a gamble that it, at least that's the mindset that Namara will be taking. It'd be more practical as well as just personal because he's glowing with a divine glow right now. Can we uh, get to uh, the city before we have any more deeper conversations? And you know, well, the, the, on the way. So that's that's why I'm bringing it up now is because if to go to the uh, Camp Dawn, we'd split off and not go to the city. We'd be going to Camp Dawn instead. That's yeah, why I'm bringing it up now. No. Uh, no. Natoli is very much against going to the religious nuts with this object. Same. Well, they're not the religious nuts. I think you talked the religious nuts. Uh, these guys oh, are Oh, yeah, but like, people. see, Atoli's stance on anything religion is just like, no, you're all wrong. I agree with that. Mm. They can be useful, but they're all weird. I think if we. Well, I guess I have I guess strong we reasons to. To temporarily ally I mean, with the thieves. I mean, he literally just straight up lied face first to like five uh, followers of the flame, so or fallen flame or whatever they're called. Just to like survival is what he does in this area. So pretending to be one of them is all well and good as long as it keeps him alive. 
the problem is going against the religious order would not help your survival. Getting on the bad side, that's also something to consider. Well, whoever said Same with we, the thieves. Whoever said that we have to yeah. hand it... Who who's said that we have to hand it over in person? We sneak into Emberboot Village, we, we store the object in our home, we send ver word to Blackjack Mel that we have the item, he sends someone random to get it. We are completely left out of the deal, except for the fact that we got it. Word will still reach the Queen that we still got it. So you're saying that we... Yeah, but... So you're saying that we try and not let anybody know that we're the ones who got it? Yeah. I mean, there are, Except there for... are obviously other ways into Emberwood Village than just the main road. Like, we, I'm, I'm assuming that we can get in unnoticed. I mean, there's no walls or anything, are there? Exactly. No. It's not a wall in a village, so and our, ho our house is on the side. Our house is on the outskirts of the village as well. So, we wait for his glow to die down, we light up his hand instead, and we carry it the rest of the way. With minimal, with minimal glow. I mean... He also is currently not not glowing that much. But he does look a little bit more suspicious right now, in case anybody does lay eye on him. Well, I would look no different than, I guess, no different than you, because we both got cloaks. Yeah, but your face is a light beam. I'm not, oh, light light. I'm, not, yes. I'm, not I'm not lighting yes, up from the inside of my cloak, so... <laughs> You're more like a bullseye near Bar Lantern, right? Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's 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 a totally take on it. Like we stay we stay out, like we stay anonymous in this deal, and hopefully it doesn't get anybody on our ass, um, because I totally told the the followers before that bandits were there. So right now the target is on the Queensmen. We don't run with the Queensmen. We're doing we're on a task for the Sacred Flame. That's the that's the official word that our party is on a task for the official flame. We could just tell them that we didn't find it. Bandits got there first. That puts the bandits and the uh, the sacred flame against each other. We can with I think with the most uh, forthrightness, without a single word of lies, can say that the bandits have it. Exactly. We can stay out of this as long as we don't hand it over personally. Uh, well, I, I if we were if we were back in Feyrun, uh we would just be going to Camp Dawn, but. Since we're not there, I guess it's. I guess we're all. If we all vote, everybody's voting to take go back in the town. That's what I'm guessing. For town and Queensman. Yep. I think. Yeah. I think we'll. I think we'll see more favors with the uh, with the queen than we will with any of the other ones. I think our survival chances goes up with somebody that knows the in and out of every city and every district. And has eyes and ears on everything that moves, rather than someone who's purely following a target. Hmm. Well, I mean, I got voted, so let's go on in. <laughs> no, I mean your 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 arguments are valid, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see the benefits of both, but I I I'm just thinking because you're we, there's both benefits because I'm thinking more of just survive. Survivability, having having a, a favor with somebody who we know can help us in the event of of in this case curse. I'm also thinking, you know, contamination. I, I, that's something we haven't really dealt with yet. But well, I guess maybe the the Queensmen probably have stuff for that too. So I guess it's probably fine. I mean, um, I, again, we are still we did still tell the the Sacred Flame that we would go investigate and we will do this for them. So, uh, like, yeah. as I said, we're still in their good graces as long as they don't find out that we have the scepter. That's true. We could just, yeah, I we think uh, it. we can bullshit it. We've done pretty good with bullshitting, so I guess that's uh, exactly since Nabar this Nabarlan, Nabarlan is neutral, so I, I, I that would fit in line with his his stance. So to uh, to the village we go. By the way, once on Brenda Taffy. On the way to Emberwood Village, is there some place that's 
sufficiently deserted, somewhere where one could make noise and not expect to attract attention. If it's a two uh, two hour walk, is there some place like that? Sure. Um, from here to Emberwood uh, Village, uh, mind you, there are there's going to be a couple of like abandoned farmhouses that'll still be upright but in disrepair. They'll be empty because no one is there because the lands just don't give any crops anymore. You are technically still within the delirium zone. I don't know if that makes any um, uh, effect for whatever you want to do, but yeah, that is there. Uh, guys, I need to do some small things. A uh, uh, small thing. It will take me about 11 minutes and it will be rather loud. So I don't want to do it in the village. Do you mind if we take the time? Need some toilet paper? I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Thank you for saying it. Everyone was thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confused as to what is happening right now. <laughs> Phyllis has to take a huge load off, if you know what I mean. He's going to go back behind the tree and just get to work. Just yep. a minute. Big explosive diarrhea. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's Drakenheim. Anything can be explosive here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, we're okay. Brennan If <laughs> someone will uh, be curious what he's doing, he will go find a nice, clean spot for a ritual circle. Yep. A nice clean spot, and... too. <laughs> yes. If I'm clean and he will <laughs> Sufficiently uh, smooth so I can draw something right. there. And he will yep. ritual cast uh, a spell. I will not say anything more. I have uh, he'll take uh... 11 minutes to cast a spell. And what you'll see is uh, after he drawn out a circle, he'll produce one of the glass bottles that he has. He will uncork it, hold it to his mouth, and from the bottom of his lungs, absolutely as loud as he can, he will proceed to scream intruder alert 12 times in a row for a total of 24 words. After what, afterwards, he will put in the cork back in the bottle and pick up the ritual. That's so funny. I, we talked about this and, oh man, I was laughing. <laughs> did you just bottle, like... An alarm or something? <laughs> huh. I'll leave it well, with Felix to explain when he does. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm he intrigued. came to me like, hey, Barry, so question, can I do this? And I read it. I was like, dude, yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm intrigued and also very worried. <laughs> I'll just add it I... as uh, the bottle of bottled screams. Yes. <laughs> cool. All of bottled screams. So, a couple of things. Um, now that you are on the road back to Emberwood Village, uh, the trek is about two hours. This means a couple of things. First off, oh, uh, after about an hour, the glow of you, Nibarlan, will fade. Interestingly, though, uh, the weapon the weapon doesn't get heavier. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh, because you have been purified. You have been illuminated. You are... Yeah. You're outside. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's easy. Um, I'm one. I wonder secondly, if casting darkness on this thing would permanently make it like immovable. <laughs> secondly, Let's not try that. No, no. I'm, it was just a train of thought. Yeah. You have two magic items with you, and while um, uh, casting identify on it can be done as an instant cast or as a ritual, I will allow ritual casting identify uh, item being done during travel because it's such a waste of time to force you to wait until you're in the village and then do it. So if you want to do an identification on your items while you're traveling, I'll allow you to do that. I don't have identify, though. Or like, is that just something I just do, though? I mean, you don't, but I believe other people do. Oh. Does someone else have identify? Not propelled. I don't have it. I, honest, I honestly thought that two of you had um, uh, identif identify magic. Oh, detect okay. magic. <laughs> detect, detect magic. magic. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, detect, detect, detect magic, magic you do, but like I, I also thought that you have uh, identify. Um, all right. Then you have another option, which is to attune to one of the two items, or if you want to roll an arcana check for it, I can allow it as well if you take a long time. And you, I, you have a long time. Uh, so. I wouldn't be able to do a history check on one, right? On the sword. 
basically my thinking is uh, I've got Artificer's Law. I would have probably read a lot about magical items and stuff like that while studying. But I understand why you're asking this, and um, I'm trying to think if it would make sense. There is an angle in which it would make sense, so yes. Okay. On okay. the sword, that is. Not on, uh, not on the scepter. Then I'm going to do history on the sword, and I'm going to add plus two to the roll that will be. So that adds the uh, proficiency once, and... Yep. I get it a second time because because of artificial law because it's a magical item, so it's uh, twenty three. All right, and with that, um, you will get a lot more information about this sword. Um, first and foremost, luckily, the sword isn't cursed. <laughs> I think that is the, the big one that we wanted to know. Um, so the sword itself is called um, Twilight, uh, as it is written on the. What was it again? Fuller. Fuller. Yes, the fuller. Thank you. And I promise you I wouldn't forget. Oh, letting you down again. Um, so the weapon is indeed called Twilight. Uh, beyond that, it has a couple of um, things. So first off, it is a great sword. It is of a very, very good make, which makes it a plus one great sword. The plus one, uh, that might be an important thing to distinguish. Whenever I play d and I have two types of plus one weapons. Plus two and above, that's always magical. With me, plus one can be of a very good make non-magical, or it can be of a very good make magical. I make a distinction between the two, because sometimes you get a really, really good weapon. I want to give you a bonus, but it's just a, a sword. I don't want to make it magical. So that is a plus one non-magical sword. In this case, however, this counts as magic. So it is a plus one magical greatsword. Um, beyond that, it is glowing uh, about uh, 15 feet uh, in, in a, like a very dim blue light. And whenever you wield this weapon, as you might have noticed, you can speak and understand Celestial. Mm. I'm putting back my uh, like Pokemon card, but for magic items. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have seen this one. <laughs> exactly. Add it to the house. In the house that it got down, I got like a collect, uh, collector's folder of <laughs> magical <laughs> item cards. <laughs> so I guess... So... Does it need attunement? The scepter? Uh, or well, the sword? either one of them. Both if, you wanna, you, if you want to use them, yes. You know what it is right now, but being able to wield it effectively, uh, you will need attunement. Uh, the speaking languages immediately takes effect as soon as you hold it. All the other uh, qualities basically only apply whenever you wield it. So the, the glowing effect, if you want to uh, 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 have any effect on that, or if you want to use it as a plus one weapon, it needs attunement. Okay. And the scepter, um, I guess it's also the same. Although, what does the scepter, so the scepter count as? So the scepter counts as a magical weapon. Uh, it is a magical quarter staff, uh, but uh, unless you do a detect magic on that, I actually require a religion check to see if you know what it is. Like you know what it is, but like what it does. Okay. Um, I it guess bonks. it bonks. Um, yeah, it, it bonks very heavily with seven hundred and fifty weight behind it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, are we? So I, he was over there doing something for. He was over there shouting, shouting. He was like grunting and stuff behind a tree and shouting. I guess what I was doing, I could get, I guess I could t do detect magic while he was doing that on the scepter. Sure. Uh, sure. Which I'll I allow that. <laughs> yeah. and with that, you will, you will get as much as I can give you uh, so that everything's safe one. So this is a magical weapon. Shocker. Um, the Scepter of St. Vitruvia uh, counts as a magical quarterstaff that will grant you a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls with it. Um, the staff itself has ten charges. While you're holding it and attuned to it, you can uh, use an action to expend one or more of its charges to cast one of the following spells from this using your own save, uh, spell save DC. Uh, you can either cast Guiding Bolt, which is a one charge. You can cast Flaming Sphere, which is two charges. Or you can cast Flame Strike, which is a very powerful spell for five charges. And the staff uh, regains 1d6 plus four every day uh, at dawn. You're noticing 
that this scepter has sort of something missing. Not that it's like missing a gem socket or anything, but it's that feeling of like it's missing. It's part of something and it's not there. It's a key. Or it's a. I too have seen. I too have seen Indiana Jones. After discovering this, I have zero, zero desire to just give this away (laughs) right now. Uh, I don't really know what flame strike is, but that sounds like it could be good. (laughs) It is a column of flame coming down from the heavens, basically doing the equivalent, I believe, of a fireball, but in place. So it's like a targeted fireball, like massive amount of damage. Let me give you the exact numbers, but it's it's a big one. It's a fuck you spell? Yeah. Mm. Uh, 46 fire damage and 46 radiant damage on a failed save. So that's 86 damage total, unless you're resistant to it. So, yeah, it's a strong spell. <laughs> and the area okay. of that is... Let me check. Uh, that is a 10-foot radius, 40-foot high. Hmm. Well so then, that, that's a I cast fuck you. Yeah, yeah. We imagine really having multiple creatures this... above each other. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do we Be really honest. want to give this to anyone, <laughs> let alone the Queen's Guard? If you try to, it keep sounds it. like a fireball. I mean, we can always steal it back. Uh, and if you keep it, three factions or more will be after us, so... Oh, that's true. I mean... I mean, even though I don't want to give it up, or I totally don't want to give it up either, it is still the smarter choice to know which faction has it. Ooh, what if what if I attune to it and then we give it away, and someone else can't attune to it? I'm assuming that's how attunement works, right? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yep. I guess everybody, you get everybody can attune to it, and then. Yep. Okay. Never mind. My thought was, oh, I tune to it, then someone else tries, and they can't use it properly. That would be a, no. It's not a lockout idea. mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I call out with uh, my mind to it. Where are you? I'm over <laughs> here. <laughs> There's a lot of weapons that can do that. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well. Well, I think the first step is to get back to the house, though. That's what we were trying to do to begin with. I mean, it's not like anybody's going to walk into a dimly lit house and just carry it out. I mean, we can just have people standing watch as well. I mean, there's not a lot of Um, light in our house, so they're not going to be illuminated. Let me get you guys to your house. 90s, bat- do, do 90s Batman in- intro here. <laughs> I used to have that on my Twitch channel, you know that? I know. Like with, with, with a green mustache. I remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, uh, so let's just say you, you come from the outskirts of the city uh, or the outskirts of the village towards your house. You can totally do that. And you don't have to roll for it that, like, if you do it quietly, nobody will have seen the better. I'm not glowing anymore, so that that's okay. Yeah. So uh, unless someone has seen you wearing this weapon, and even then, still, like people come in and out, like with the weirdest shit from Dragonheim here, so nobody will pay attention to you, anyways. Too much. Okay. Did you just under okay. your breath mutter too much? Always too much. Much. I got my eye on okay. you. Okay. <laughs> um. Well then. Yes. Uh... So you get in there, you store it in some place that's dark. That way it won't be illuminated, and the person trying to steal it will not be illuminated. So they have to come up with some clever way, like we did, to take it out of this house. And until then, we know where it is. Yeah. Um, I, I guess also, since we're planning on... I guess since we are planning on giving away the scepter to somebody or selling it, um, while we're walking, I would have attuned to the greatsword. Sure. 
in that case, you can add it as a plus one great sword. It's just a normal one, plus one great sword. You can add all the extra description that you. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, is Twilight part of the? Um, let's have a look. They might have added it as an item on D and D Beyond. I mean, if anything, I can. Uh, I totally can go to uh, the Skull and Sword and let Mel know that we got it. If that's the path we're taking. Because I definitely don't think we should leave it undefended even though we just got in. Yeah. And I'm already a cloaked figure, so running in and bumping into anybody that wants to talk to me is, or Atoli is, uh, probably less of a chance. No, Twilight is not a uh, known weapon. Uh, but if you look for a, uh, a great sword plus one, because uh, that is the main feature, of course, for the attacking, uh, you can, if you want to, in its description, add the fact that you can speak and understand celestial, and yep. you have the fifteen foot uh, glow. I figured as much, Elodie. <laughs> the what? Now? Uh, she okay. don't. She doesn't want to talk to Blackjack. So I just offered. That is a fair point. I just offered that uh, Atoli could get over there and uh, more unconspicuous than most, since he wears a hood already. And it's kind of mal malfunctioned as a person, so uh, probably less people and want to talk directly to him. Well, one question about the sword. Once I'm attuned to it, can I turn off and on the celestial speaking thing? Yes, you can when you're attuned to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is the caveat of getting attuned to it. Yep. Damn, I should have picked celestial language. We could have a secret, we could have a secret language together. Yeah, I know. Too bad. So, are we? So that was the plan is for a totally to go. Yeah, I'll, over. I can, I can go over there. What time is it right now? Late afternoon. Okay. Is well, everybody okay with that, or do you have any like any any other I, things that I? I'm gonna leave Blondie. I'll go with you. I'm gonna leave Blondie because she's kind of conspicuous, but I'm gonna go with you as well. Uh. Okay. Are you sure? You're the only one who can really carry it inconspicuously now. Oh. Um. Yeah, maybe. Okay, then I won't then. <laughs> You're right. Okay, I'll, I'll totally just head over. All right. Um, in the Skull and Sword, uh, Blackjack Mel will still be there. Disregarding any other patrons in the bar, he'll uh, he'll keep his head low. And walk over to a Blackjack Mel's table and, and sit down in front of him. Hey, Snake Boy, how are you doing? We'll do a hand gesture to like lower, uh, lower your voice. Oh, we got it. Oh, you did? Yes. Interesting. Now, we have some things we want as well. And you promised an audience with the Queen. Hmm. You're willing to hand you over the scepter in lieu of payment and the audience. So you want both? You offered both last we spoke. Uh-huh. So... And we're willing to do the trade. We have the item that you requested. Oh, wonderful. Why the hush hush? Well, let's just say the... Followers of the, uh, the Sacred Flame is looking for the Scepter, and we ran into the followers of the Flaming f whatever religious nuts that lives in the city as well. They're also looking for the Scepter. Mm. We'd rather not paint a target on our back. I'm sure a guy in your, procession, in your profession knows that kind of... Uh... <laughs> you sound like you've been in a bit of trouble already. I used to live in Drakenheim. I know the ins and outs. Trouble always finds you, but you can dodge uh, trouble. Now, you raise an interesting point that I want to talk to you about, if you would be able to do this little thing for us, you know, which you did. So, oh, well, first things first. So an audience with the queen. I think I could do that. Sure. I mean, you're making quite a name for yourself, bringing this to us. We're very happy with this. It's going to make us a lot of money. So here's the deal. 
we're going to sell it. And then you get your cut. As promised, it's the full 1,250 gold. And where is my promise on that? Like, how can I, other than your word? This is a highly a. sought after artifact. A very yeah. powerful one of that. Are you meaning to say that I'm going to double cross you? From beneath the hood, like a totally will do it, like a, a like the sideways smile. Like, is it not in our profession? <laughs> ah, yeah, I forgot that you guys are smart. Mm. That's what you get for dealing with thugs all the time. Uh, I still didn't want to double cross you, but uh, it's an interesting idea. I just nah. have to cover Anyways. my own back. Listen, we'll do halfsies and halfsies. I I don't carry around twelve hundred gold on my person. You Wouldn't know, expect you to. Mm-hmm. I'll do half and half. I can give you the half of it right now. Once it's sold, we'll give you the other half. You have my word on that. Besides, I will grant you the audience with the queen. I'm going to have to make a couple of arrangements, but I'll let you know once that is all in place. Uh, you will have to get into the city, though. You know of Buckle Down Row? Would uh, I totally recall that? 100%. In cool. uh, the olden days in Drakenheim, Buckle Down Row was basically Party Street. Um, right. it, all the good bars and cafes were on Buckle Down Row. Okay, I'll nod. Good. I'll let you know when and where, um, but basically, we'll have you come over to Buckle Down Row, and uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a little tour, taking the sights, maybe visit the fighting pits. It's fun. Now, when you say visit the fighting pits, and he looks up to get like stare into his eyes, you're not going to throw us into the fighting pits, are you? <laughs> not unless you want me to. No, you can participate, but it's all voluntarily. We're not animals. Um, but seeing as how you've like started to make a name for yourself a little bit, I mean, you've survived Drakenheim thus far. I'd imagine you're good with, well, magic and stabbing and like the usual to get by. Um, we could turn that into a profit. You know, I used to have a fighting group and uh, yeah, they died. So I'm kind of looking for a new one. I'm kind of like a manager for groups like that. So, you know, people bet money on you. I make sure that a lot of people do. You get like an 80-20 split and all that. We can talk business later. But, you know, that is something to consider when we're, once we're at the fighting pits. It's going to be a lot of fun. We should talk about that. Um, if, hey. If you want us to go to Buckle Down Row, do you have an easier yeah. way to get in there? Rather than the uh, the roads that everybody knows and travels? No, you just walk over there. It's not that far. It's not on the inside of the city or anything. We ran into a, a hunting pack of... Uh, he sits there snapping a little bit, forgotten their names. Uh, oh, God. Hyena-looking beast. Oh, those things. They're kobolds. Well, <laughs> but I'm not there. They're, they're not kobolds. Oh, no, no. They're not, uh, no, 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 I meant no, no, no is what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Kobolds are little lizard guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and they were traveling the main road, so walking in there just seems a little bit more dangerous as ever with every passing day. Now, what's a knoll? Let's just say there was at least 30 of them with animals, hunting animals, and they were armed to the teeth. They didn't oh. look like they wanted to cuddle. Like big guy, big teeth, kind of look like a dog. Yeah. Ah, that's not a doll. That's a garmir. Above table, that's what they call them in this world. <laughs> Still, they didn't look friendly, and they were traveling nah. the main road. So what did you do? You stuck to the back roads. You avoided them. Would I be here if I didn't? Right. So that's what you do when you go to Buckle Down Road. You can handle yourself. Lean outs then. He was obviously just trying to get a, a, a different path in and out of the city. And he's gonna not going to give it to you. <laughs> but, but I see you're anxious for something else. I might have more work for you guys. Uh, if this scepter proves true, um, like you want to have a safer way into the city, right? Yeah. So have you been into the walled side of the city yet? No. <laughs> Not a lot of people go in there. You know why? Because it's dangerous to go in there. All the gates and whatnot. Yeah. 
It's not and easy. And if you're on the wrong side of the hooded lantern, you're not getting in at all. Mm, exactly. So how do we get into the city? Huh? That's the question. Exactly. But I might know of a way. Thing is, I need a bit of help. I'm listening. So I've been digging with a couple of old friends of mine, and they recall that there was an inn. So this inn used to actually have a direct passage to the sewers. And from there, you can just walk underneath and enter the city unseen. So simple. Mm -hmm. The only trouble is, the inn isn't empty. And I need someone to check it out, what's going on over there, see if it's dangerous, and see if that passageway hasn't been blocked off. But if the inn is not empty, what's inhabiting it? I don't know. That's why I need you guys for it. Who brought you that information, then? Yeah, I know a guy. My cousin Mike. He just talked to another guy. You know how it goes. Right. All right. Well, you uh, you send someone to pick up the scepter and uh, half the coin, and we have a deal. Yeah. Good. Um, so here's your first half, and he gives you like this massive stack of six hundred and twenty-five uh, gold. Yeah. I imagine. So here you are. That's 625. Don't break your back on that. He like, um, scoops it over and hides it in his cloak. Good, good. Um, the other half will come to you when we've sold it. Um, as a matter of fact, next time we see each other in Buckle Down Row might be a good place to give that to you as well. Or we can deliver it somewhere else. That's all good. Um, and remember, re remember my little idea. It's called the Black Ivory Inn, by the way. If you're interested in your group, you, where are they, by the way? Starting one of the most holy relics that we've seen so far. Ah, smart man. Um, yeah, when you when when you decided what you want to do, it's called the Black Ivory Inn. Go ahead and have a look over there. But that Atoli gets up slowly, and be, just before he like walks away entirely, he he turns around like, oh, send somebody really strong and somebody a little pious maybe. Yeah, like we have that amongst our ranks. I mean, the piousness, of course. <laughs> Strong is fine. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, try, try anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. There you have a good one, huh? All right. I, I have a thought here. This is why we're just, uh, I'll be discussing this. What if, uh, what if we give them the immovable rod? Because those thugs thought it was the scepter to begin with. What if we give them the immovable rod and say it's the scepter? See, there's the difference. Those guys are thugs and not smart. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a very clear difference between what's a rod and what's a scepter. Well, Nesta and they do have some... smart guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm, all for, they probably get it. I'm all for trying to trick them and everything, but <laughs> I don't think that one's going to fly. <laughs> Yeah, you're, once they get to somebody who knows what they're talking about, they'd say, wait, th this is just a, a movable rod. What are you doing? <laughs> Would that totally return to everything? that? Yes. And then he starts sanding out the points. Do you leave anything out, or do we just get No, anything? he tells everything. Every word. Okay. Okay. And, and then well, starts, it looks like yeah, starts on hand, handing out the coins. So that's like we're getting half now and then half later, which is honestly a fairly good deal, in in my opinion. Yeah. So it's a hundred and five. Pop. Yep. Hundred twenty-five pop. Yep. That is a huge chunk of change. <laughs> I mean, it's it's by, by a totally standards, he's fucking rich right now. I could have more than one light bulb. It, considering the fact that he's had no no money ever, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I so, saw a companion uh, what, pet. This is so. What do we? Okay. What do we do with the scepter then? If they're are they coming here? Or are we meeting? Are we putting it somewhere from the pickup? Are we doing a dead drop? What are we doing? I told Blackjack Mel to send someone uh, strong and somebody a little pious. 
Okay. I guess we can well, wait a minute. We should uh, also probably have a look at the blacksmiths if he could help us with our little problems. Oh yes. Wait. Are are we talking about our special special projects for them? Yes. Yeah. That's a uh, It's uh probably a good good idea then. Let's find out if our special projects have been how he's done with them. I guess I'll stay here then. Okay. Cuz like we, will... we should not leave this thing unguarded at all right now. Yes. Felix will have taken the time while uh, Atoli was talking to Mel. Uh, he would have cleaned up and put on his fancy clothes. <laughs> yeah, I love it when you do that. <laughs> and the Brawlin's gonna. Atoli, uh, his idea is like. Tr try and pick it up, see what happens. It's light as a feather. Wait, to me? How? Inside the house. It's dark inside our house. Hmm. Correct. I am not illuminated. Correct. I am now confused. Possibly also correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just curious if that would, if you could, if it mattered if we were in the chapel or not. Anyway, you can think about that. We're going to go get our stuff. <laughs> I would probably go along with you guys because... In in the, in the meantime, like, I totally going to sit down in a darkened corner, like, s seriously studying this damn scepter. <laughs> Religion's weird, right. man. Religion's weird. The blacksmith is obviously still open. Yes, we'll be approaching. And... Hello, fine sir. We've been. Have you any luck with the uh, projects we assigned or requested, rather? Uh, I have been working on it a little bit. Um, remind me, what were those projects again? He says as he looks over like the plethora of weapons that he has behind him. Uh, gave you, a, gave you, basically trying to make some delirium tipped arrows here. The Delirium arrowheads. Yes, yes, yes. So I've been trying a couple of things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've noticed with one of the chips, um, when I try to chisel it into a different shape, it broke. And the second it broke, it lost some of its purple coloring. Um, and it looks like this. And he gives you the two like chip delirium uh, shards. It still kind of looks like delirium, but almost as if it's like... As if some of its contents have slipped out, like if it was like a like a, a water-filled crystal that's been dripping empty. That's kind of what it looks like. He says, I don't really know what I can do with this, but he says, I do have this. And he reaches uh, below and he grabs a total of three arrows. And he says, from the chips that you've had, I basically, some of them were very sharp. And I imagine that if you shoot this at someone, it will uh, actually penetrate probably flesh and, and leather, and I hope armor as well, but that is something that you'd have to try. It is sharp enough, I think. Um, so what it basically is, is is a headless arrow with a delirium crystal at the, at the front. Uh, it's worth a try, I think. Worth a try. I guess it's the most we asked for. I knew there was kind of a long shot with it, whether it'd work or not. Uh, the right. How much how much is this going to set me back here? <sighs> This was honestly one of the first times that I could work with Delirium in such a way. I've, I've never had someone ask me something like this, so it was an interesting project. Um, now, before I, I set a price on this, I, I have to clear my conscience with one thing. You are <laughs> going to use this for good, right? <laughs> I, it'll, sure, it'll be used crimes. in self-defense. It'll be used in self-defense. You seem like an uh, upstanding man. Uh, I think that'll... Sure. He's um, illuminated. <laughs> Sir, I'll have you know that I was illuminated by stealing a scepter from a grave. <laughs> I, I was blessed by St. Vitruvius himself. This is 
I, I am a fine upstanding gentleman. <laughs> yeah, kneel before me. <laughs> yes, with just the eyes and Montali with just raised eyebrows watching this. <laughs> Uh, for the three arrows, like, it wasn't beyond the the the, the chipped one, which unfortunately uh, uh, broke. I think, which you can still have, and he like hands you that that broken piece of delirium as well. Um, for these three, um, it wasn't that much effort, so ten gold is fine. I didn't do much beyond just affixing it on onto an arrow. Fair enough. Here's uh, here's ten gold. Thank you. Um, I hope these will defend and, you in in your darkest hour. And you know what? That's a Fine looking piece of charcoal. I'll give you another 10 gold for that piece of charcoal behind you. Oh, this? That's my son. Uh, oh, that. And the. <laughs> like... uh, Pete looks around the corner. What was that? That? It's like. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's just, just as, a, as a token of thanks. I, I, I Just so we're doing some trade here, I, I, I'll buy that. Piece of one piece of charcoal from me for 10, 10 gold. Oh, yeah, sure. Peter, can you can you get that charcoal for 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 the man? And uh, the young guy uh, hands you the charcoal for ten gold. I had to make it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I believe I uh, I was hoping you could help me with a uh, custom made dagger. Yes, and it was you. The with the you wanted to have, it. yes, you wanted to have a notch with the crystal affixed to that. Just a notch. I didn't even give him a crystal. I think. Yes, um, that I. Uh, that's true. Actually, you didn't give the crystal. You just explained like the the notch. Uh, that was easy enough. Um, I hope this will work. And he gives you the dagger, uh, where there is a, a slightly like rounded notch with two tips. He said, like if you're gonna. Like, this is uh, wicked. If you, I don't know what exactly what you want to do with this, but if you, instead of stab someone, if you basically run this by someone's neck or something, you're going to pull the vein out rather than slice it. Like, that is self defense, right? Of course. It's, it's a dog eat dog world out there. I've never eaten dog, but sure. Um, I, that's, uh, sure. no. Really? You've never been to China? How much do I owe you? What's China? Uh, <laughs> Something you eat. Fine um, pottery. <laughs> uh, so this will be. Um, uh, th this was a little bit of work uh, to keep the blade intact, but this is twenty gold. Thank you, and he gives him twenty-five gold. You're very kind. Um, I'm. I'm very happy to be of service. If there is anything else that you would need at some point, I'd be more than happy to help you. Oh, we we throw our weight, we throw around coin in this town like we fucking <laughs> like we're barons. Also, one more thing. Um, I've noticed that you have an interest in delirium. Um, I've wanted to work with this material for a little while now. So I, I imagine thank you for, for the opportunity. Um, while I was working with these crystals, um, I heard um let's just say through the grapevine that um there is another way for me to work with this. The crystals themselves seem to be very hard to work with, but there are ways to, like, you know, fix them as decoration for the pommel of a sword and, and whatnot. Um, making arrows out of them, apparently, is a, a thing that I might start doing. Um, but beyond the crystals, um, this meteor that came down wasn't just purely crystalline. Uh, a lot of people say that the meteor itself was largely made of crystal, but also made of a metal that the crystals were sort of in embedded in. This metal itself must have exploded all over the city as well. And while I can't really work with the, the crystals, I imagine the metal that must have been affixed to these crystals for such a long time must have a bit of magical property to it as well. I'm dying to work with something like that. It's, it should create some of the highest grade weapons and, and, and armor that I've ever made. If you ever come across so, that, I'd be very happy to get that off of your hands. Meteor metal. Got it. <laughs> yes. Meteor metal. Okay. Uh, well, if we keep, I'll keep an eye out for it then. Great. Great. Good luck. And let's hope that you never have to use these, of course. Of course. I, 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 I don't want to have to use them. Good. You see like a nervous, un, un, like unsure smile that hopes that what you say is true. <laughs> La 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 la. 
La 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 la. War crimes. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Are these so? Is it just an arrow that I could say arrow with a crystal in it? Yeah, just ma- make it a delirium tipped arrow because that's basically what it is. I just wanted to underline the fact that you can't chisel these things into shape, but these crystals are sharp. So, yeah, putting it onto on top of a a feathery twig is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's actually something in here. It says hardened delirium to arrows. Mm-hmm. Is that what this is? Oh, no. okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> that wait, is no, hardened delirium. That. No, that's something else. Oh, this. Oh, okay. <laughs> More war crimes. <laughs> This just goes to show well, you're not think... the first to think of using the as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> That's really worrying. Yeah. Uh, on his way back, Felix would have uh, tried to pick up some tar or maybe gamma arabic from some of the traders. Um, sure. Um, that would be. Let me have a look if I have a rough indication of price for that. Something that can be used as an adhesive, so that's the first thing I could think of. Yeah, I'm not going to look for, for uh, adhesive is really expensive in D&D for some reason. Um, not the magical adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want adhesive? Yeah, I got that. Um, um, yeah, I, I got something here that is sort of close. Let, let's make it uh, so double. That's 20 gold. That's fine. And I assume that's a sizable amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a bottle or something. Okay. So I will. W- once he's back or at some point later, I just want to get it over with. He will just take one of the. Uh, one of the four delirium chips that he has, put it in the notch and just apply some of the adhesive so it stays there when he swings it. But it should sure. still be... The idea is if he stabs and twists the knife, it should dislodge. Yeah, with with enough force applied to it, you will be able to get it off. Um, but you basically now have a delirium shard affixed to your weapon. Thank you. And I will remember that. <laughs> uh, I'll just add it as uh, delirium chip dagger. The, d- sure. <laughs> the DM will remember this. As you get back to your house, um, you notice that there are two more people standing there that are approaching the shack. And they politely knock on the door. Tieflings. Hello. Hello. Yeah. We're here to inquire about the found item. We find lots of items. Who sent you? Blackjack Mel had <laughs> sent us for something. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Great. Well, step into <laughs> yeah. my step into my parlor. Said the spider to the fly. Good, good. Sit down at my table. Oh, that's uh, Princess and the Frog. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> like, it totally mm. will stand in the middle of the, rambunc- the, the ramshackle house and hold the uh, the scepter out in one palm. Ooh, look, sister, there it is. Just, just, to, be sh- just to be sure, can I make an inside check if they're actually with Blackjack Mall? Like if they're if they're like working for him or something? Yeah. Yeah. Where they're wearing sure, the garbs. They're wearing the garbs, aren't they? Um to find garbs. What what are the garbs? I mean there's they're decked out in the same color scheme that the 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 Red Queen runs with. New? No, they're not. No. Uh but uh with the uh let's see with the fifteen and the, the eleven as well. So good point indeed, LD. Do the Queen's men have a uniform? They do not. They do not. Uh, the thugs that you've seen so far are all wearing leathers that all kind of look alike, but that's not a uniform by any means. In contrast to that, these two look way different. But both of them are sporting a red band around their arm, on which is depicted a playing card with a queen on it. Mm. Okay. Look, sister, there it is. That's that scepter. 
You got the money? Yes, I do. Here you go. And what were the Added remaining the what were the remaining parts of our deal with Mel? You had a Is it deal like he's st he still he still holds the palm but like holds it open palmed, but now he closes the hand around the scepter instead. You think that we are privileged to that knowledge? I think you made it here rather quickly after my meeting with Blackjack. Uh, well, we work quickly. We have to before someone else gets to it. The early bird gets the worm, I believe. Big question above table. Did I hear right that they offered money again? Well, yeah, yeah I, was about to, I was about to speak up and say, Bronze Conspiracy says, I, I'm, Atoli, I'm assuming you have the 800 gold we, uh, we spoke about or Atoli spoke about getting the other half of our payment. You cut out at the end, I think. Oh, I was going to say, oh. I, I was like, you, you said you had the rest of the gold, so the other half of our payment. What was it? Uh, 800 gold, I think. Is that what you're asking them? Yes, I'm asking them that. Looks as they're trying to bargain. <laughs> no, not 800. No, oh, it was, it, you make it, it you was, make me anxious. I don't like to be anxious. No, don't mind him. No, you I, tell, I, I tell, I tell, you tell me. His hands out to no, 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 no. You tell me how much half is that you're still waiting for. Oh, no. Uh, if you don't give me the exact number, we have a problem. Well, see. Tell it how much, how no, much no, was no, the hold exact up, number? Hold up, hold up. Because we already received half the payment, you see, and I asked Blackjack to send two people. Now, one of them would obviously be a, th you know, a brawny thug, which would be you. He gest gestures with a smile to, well, I suppose, deceit. And the other one would be, oh, what was the name for it again? And he, looks, was... at, he looks at lies and, and it's like, what was the other request? It was quite specific. I believe I want my question answered first. How much was the other half? Uh, and he'll say, like, without without a pause or without hesitation, 650. Pious. He opens the his palm again. <laughs> Good. Good. My, 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 I was getting at, we weren't getting gold today after they sold it. Yep. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm just wait. Cause I was still like, I'm okay. still on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they take the scepter off of your hand. No, he closes it again. Oh, except he will hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Except blackjack told me we wouldn't get the money before the scepter was sold. Correct. So why are you here with the second part of the payment already? Making sure that it's getting sold. Shakes his head a little bit. Mm. That sounds outside the deal that we made. Can I send Bali make... into the doorway behind them? Sure. sure. Just walking over there? Sure. I'd like to make sure that Atoli still has the controlling grip of the scepter here. You're like a tiny he... guy, but you can try. Yeah, but like, <laughs> no, no, but like, he's like, he's got most of his palm while the other guy has it from like above, but he's got it like hold from underneath. <clears throat> Do we know how many charges this thing has left on it? No. Cool. Are you attuned to it? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, for the time that they he went spent, over he there, spent... he said he spent time there studying it. Yeah, it's not an hour. In... No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know oh, why the deal make... has been altered. The deal hasn't been altered. There is a prospective buyer. You're getting your money. What, you don't want your money? Probably will do a sideways glance to um, to both Felix and, uh, and Nibaland. Keeping the queen waiting, she doesn't like that. I don't like altered deals. Can you bring... Deal. Can so, you maybe bring uh, Mel back with you to confirm that that's right? Let me just get them. I'm not I'm, an yeah, errant yeah. boy. Yeah, Who do you no. think I am? No, time oh, is money. That I'll is out of the question. Uh, 
the deal, yeah, the, this, uh, yeah, you were getting at what I was getting at. The, the deal sounds like it's been altered. We were going to give this to Mel's guy who would sell it and then give us the gold later. Here you are saying you work for Mel with the and gold. You've, and you've already sold it without confirming the item is actually real. You think I haven't confirmed that? Yeah, I think Mel that. said that you were a smart man. A smart man wouldn't be holding on to... Uh, well, a smart man would still be exactly. holding on to the scepter. <laughs> Shut up! I got that backwards. <laughs> 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 I was defending my position. Shut up. <laughs> Listen. I will take the 600 gold for myself. I'm fine with that. But you're going to have a lot of trouble. Are you going to give it to me, or are we going to have to walk out and make a lot of people very angry on your behalf? I think I'll just go ahead and ask Mel if you are the people we have to be expecting. How are you going to do that? Really, Felix will you can just wait go back minutes. to the Skull and Sword and ask if uh, we should be expecting two tieflings. You better make a run for it. I'll wait one minute, and then we have a problem. I think he can make it in one minute. You can. Felix will go over and... Uh, what kind of... Yeah, sorry. Walk up to Mel and... So Mel uh, is about to leave, by the way. He's, gonna, he's oh. coming out. Oh. How wonderful. Um, Drag him with you. We just have... <laughs> would you mind coming along? We have a situation, and we're not sure if the people that have come to get the item are with you. You mean the ask, two, are they are they tieflings? You mean the two tieflings? Yes, you? they've been a bit weird. Iffy. <laughs> Iffy. Yeah, they are they are a bit weird, but they do work for me. What did they murder one of your party members? <laughs> Nabarlin Nibar Nibar tells Eldie that they're that it's all good. Nabarlin tells Eldie that they're good. Elodie has taken a vow of silence today, replies. <laughs> Elodie's in the chat. <laughs> yeah, because we're, we're linked mentally, so that, that's, that's why I, I know. ran. Yeah. In that case, Probably. we'll get them the desired item, and it's, thank it's, you for confirming it. Yeah. It's, it's not that they're, they're, they murdered one of us, it's that we're about to murder them. <laughs> <laughs> because war crimes! I'm not trapped in here with you. Yeah. Okay, so she puts a hand on the Tully's shoulder. And he turns to the side, like... Hmm. With and with, with her words saying that, like, he'll open his palm again. But <laughs> extend the other hand for the, for, the, for the coin. As he lifts the scepter out of your hand, he quickly looks it over, and then looks at his sister and just nods. Yeah, it's the one. And he hands it to his sister. His sister, who has been mostly silent grabs the scepter and starts uttering a couple of words, which I think one of you might understand. Uh, but I quickly have to check. Uh, does one of you speak deep speech? Yes, I do. Okay. You will recognize uh, a spell being cast in deep speech. I don't know if you know the spell itself, but you recognize that the deep speech is being used oh, wait. to... In wait, never mind, it. I don't. It's it's under common, not deep speech. Oh. Never mind, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. They're closely <laughs> related, but you will not... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you I have Undercommon and Abyssal and Primordial as well, so it's like, ah, damn, right between it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, it, it so it basically, it sounds like she's basically cursing everything to all hell, but like in a subtle way. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, so she does that as she's holding the scepter, and, and after she's uttered a couple of words, all of a sudden she says, <laughs> and she lets it go, and as she lets it go, the scepter just disappears in a puff of smoke. Neat trick. Sold. Given the gold. And the gold is handed to you. There. That concludes our business. I hope we'll never run into each other again. Bye-bye. Pleasure was all mine, okay. he says with a smirk as he holds the bag of gold. They both walk off into the city. Well, that was, that was something, all right. <laughs> Hey, now uh, how to do business. You're the stink guy. <laughs> 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 All right. And that, for today, concludes the session. That was good. 
Well, you made a lot of money. <laughs> yes, we made a shit. That's, that's um, 125 more gold. <laughs> yep. Jesus Christ. I'm a fucking baron now. 1,250 gold would be enough to buy land. Yes. Now, the, the immediate question that follows right after is, why would you want to buy land around Drakenheim? But hey. Yeah. <laughs> Details. <Sturgy. laughs> the real estate market. And a great elite. Like I was glad that you can that you could pull through. I'm glad that you were here because, like, you know, I, if, if you would have missed a session, then yeah, you know, I mean, we, we can always pull through. But it's always more fun when you. You know, it was mm -hmm. actually kind of fun yeah. as well doing the little chat we had in the house while they were all over elsewhere. Yeah, like, still, <laughs> yeah. still go moving forward with like, um, with like with. with if you want to keep that. I'm I'm fine with it. Like just every once in a while, like I do have to tap between other things as well. So if there's something important, do remind me of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But feel free to keep using that. It's, it's I, very, I like it's that. very flavorful when something is happening in two places at once. Yeah, I, I feel like that was cool. All right. So you have a whole bunch of gold, potential new quests, and uh, something to look forward to next week. I imagine. Yeah, I'm going on a pilgrimage um, to get tentacles. Pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if my yeah, voice has improved. Nope, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. That voice, though, like you know, just add a rolling R to it, and you're like a vampire. <laughs> Bit of hissing, and there you go. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, everybody. I will see you guys Bye. next week. All right, cool. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. That is going to be the end of session five as well of Dungeons of Dragonheim. Thank you to everyone turning in, turning up, turning in, turning out, turning up, turning whatever, turning upside down. Ah, I'm really enjoying these though. So uh, I hope you are too. And, um,. Yeah, don't um, don't be afraid to leave a comment or anything on um, on YouTube. They're going up on YouTube uh, within the next couple of days, and they will be on uh, Twitch as well as VODs. So, uh, hey, thank you all for hanging, and I will see you all tomorrow, actually, on a normal gaming stream. Um, Tomorrow we'll probably do a bit more RimWorld, and later in the evening we have a sponsored segment with um, Bellrite. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. And I'll see you there. <laughs>